Good morning. It's 7 a.m. here on Friday, August 28th. With a your temperature right now about 65 degrees. Jacob Hester's joins the show in hour number one to recap the Saints' first round pick. Also, Rivers Huey joins the show at 9 o'clock. You can follow today's show on Twitter at OTB underscore ESPN or follow us on YouTube on the 104.5 ESPN YouTube channel. Hour one of Off the Bench, live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge studio, starts now. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Jacob Hester and T-Bob Hebert. Yeah, 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 yeah! Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Hey, T, they said I gotta come off the bench. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, what's happening, everyone? Welcome in Friday, April 28, 2023. Uh, let's go ahead and get this out of the way immediately, folks. Today's going to be a bad voice day, okay? I mean, it just is. I don't know what to tell you. Don Juan was absolutely popping off last night. Huge shout out to Rouses for putting that on. Just an incredible time. But anytime you, you know, been smoking cigars and pipes for three hours and you uber home at 11 30 and whatever you wake up like whatever the, the, you, you all get the point okay it's gonna be a bad voice day but it's gonna be a good show day because there's a lot to get to from last night let's go live look at the upgrade from our boy here uh out of the hotel room he looks to be i can't tell exactly where he is jake hester is live in kansas city it looked like kansas city was popping off as well jake what's up brother what's going on uh, good morning. Uh, yeah, I had to uh, upgrade it yesterday. You know, I was in witness protection. Yeah. Um, I, I was first 48T, as you said, and so there there wasn't a lot of light here in the hotel room. I even Look took the it. cover off the light. I tried everything that I possibly could do, and it didn't work. So what did I do? Well, I drug a stool into the bathroom. No. The bathroom mirror had great what lighting. You know? And I have a setup here. This is actually like right here's the sink, like right in front Wait. of me. We put like a little board like over the sink so I could lay the laptop on the sink. Oh, that Wait, what we're looking at, that's the bathroom wallpaper behind you, obviously? Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm shocked. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I thought it was like, I thought it was some sort of stand up maybe that you had found somewhere that like a fellow <laughs> media member had or something to throw behind you. Oh, man, bro. I got to give you huge credit here, Jake. That's commitment to the show, to show quality. It looks excellent. You look excellent. Last night looked excellent. I was like flabbergasted. And I guess I shouldn't be. I am every year. Um, I was flabbergasted by just the sheer amount of people at the draft like that. Well, at the draft last night. Uh, set the scene for us, man. What was it like being there live? So th this is so odd. We were at this huge bar, Taps on Main, that's actually a Buffalo Bills bar. Like Whoa. it's owned by a Bills fan in Kansas City. There was so many members of Bills Mafia at this bar. And I was doing the show with EJ Manuel, who was a former yep. first round pick from the Bills. And so they were going wild once they figured out EJ was there. And the Chiefs fans, obviously, like Chiefs fans show up for everything but we were about i mean not not far i mean a couple of seconds walk it felt like from everything that was going on and it was just so cool to see all the they shut down the streets and so like all yeah. the fans just walking back and forth and the only place you know in our bar it was a lot of bills fans but outside the only place i've ever seen more red and yellow is huddy paul's closet <laughs> that's the only other place that i've seen that much red and yellow and so it was quite the scene to uh, Kansas City showed out like you knew they would. Uh, wait, so is I know, and I, I kind of loved like the almost WWE style intro last night with yeah. Patrick Mahomes and Kelsey swaggering out there, carrying the Lombardi, basically like, you know, crowd pop going crazy. <laughs> um, so wait, wait, so uh, real quick, this is just me being, being, being curious. So the Bills then, because they're good now and because they're winning now, right? 
they can embrace and love EJ Manuel, right? Like it may not have gone yeah. how they wanted, but you know, that's a bill. He's a guy who like has great stories. I'm sure that they want to hear, you know, he was on the team for a while. And although he didn't maybe accomplish what they wanted to, it's all good now because they're good. So, so, so Bill's mafia was freaking out over EJ Manuel. They were, uh, I mean, gosh, my poor guy, he was, he was trying to do a, a five hour live radio show with Oof. no breaks really. And they were taking pictures and he was great about it. He loved it. There was a couple of EJ manual jerseys in the crowd. And so it, it was a lot of fun, man. We, we had a really good group and to have a former NFL GM on set with us, like Mark Dominic T it was yeah. such a resource for us because there was so many trades and, you know, we're asking him so many questions like, you know, who do you talk to? How long do you had those conversations? If you have a player that you really like, like how many voices are in there? How many are you listening to? Because not everybody's going to agree. And so he really broke it down from every single angle. And it's so fascinating, you know, everything that goes in, to the draft and really like what can change in that 10 minute period, depending on what happens in front of you. There's a couple of cases last night that you feel like, okay, this team was absolutely going with this player. And then they got selected right before them and yeah. they kind of had to scramble a little bit. And so, man, it was, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. And I'm sure y'all had a lot of fun there at Don Juan's too. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, look, it, it was, it was, it was a different vibe. Certainly. It sounds like y'all were doing actual, like interesting behind the scenes draft talk. Uh, I was just, you know, yelling curse words and, and trying to make jokes for an hour and a half. But I got to say this, definitely the most fun I've ever had at the draft. Like, you know me, I've been kind yeah. of a party pooper on this entire draft run up. And I, I owe an apology because being there with all the people and just hanging out and, and then having like kind of the round table with all the fellas at 104.5. I know I missed it last year. So you know what I'm talking about. It, it, I, it was yeah. like, it was super, super fun. So Shout out, Ross Don Juan. What's the most interesting thing that you learned from former NFL GM Mark Dominic last night? I, I think it's really just, like I mentioned, how many voices. Now, the stories, and, and I've told the, some of those stories on our show, just about how they try to make sure that the character is there. But just, like, truly, like, what pecking order it goes through and how many people you have to. And then if you have your guy, and if, you know, you've been waiting, and you've been waiting around, and your guy's there – and you're ready to go. Like, you're like, okay, our guy fell to us. And then all of a sudden, a team either jumps you or a team makes a little bit of a surprise move. Like, yeah. you look at what, let's see, Seattle. Like, Seattle takes Jackson Smith and Jigba. Now, receiver wasn't their highest need, but the Chargers' highest need was a receiver. Yeah. And so did they really like Jackson Smith and Jigba? The Chargers went all the way down the clock and it looked like they might have been scrambling a little bit and he's like it's fascinating because you know you have your guy and everybody's talking through it and then all of a sudden when you don't it's like okay how do we let's go to the area scout let's go to the head scout let's go to the position coach let's go to the coordinator and you're trying to like make sure you get a confirmation from every one of those guys that this is the pick and you want to turn it in how, how do you feel I, I wanted to ask you I wanted to get here eventually but since we're here let's just get there uh Obviously, you're a Bush League Bolts guy through and through. Yes. How do you feel about the Quinn? I know you got. I know you loved TCU last year. You might have had your sights on Jackson Smith and Jigba, but how do you feel about Quentin Johnson? Well, I didn't. I mean, I didn't think Jackson Smith and Jigba would be really even an option there. T. I didn't think that he would last all the way until number twenty. But like, I'm sitting here and like, I got the uh, my, my uh, receivers, my top ten, okay. Okay. and I had him number and I had him number three. So I had Jackson Smith and Jiggle one. I had Jordan Addison from USC two, but I did have Quentin Johnson three. I know a lot of people had Zay Flowers that's ahead, it, yeah. but it, look, I, I just think the body type, that's what the Chargers are looking for. Uh, Mike Williams isn't getting any, any younger. He's been injured, and so they went and got kind of a receiver that's in that mo uh, mold, 6'3", 215 pounds. And he, gosh, he feels like he's either going to be Kevin White or A.J. Green. Like, there's no that's, in between. Like, that's what this guy feels like. To that's me. a hell of a spread, dude. Um, I know. Uh, wait, why Kevin White, though? Why, why, why do you think Quinn Johnson feels like he may go down the Kevin White path? I just think when you look at his size, and, you know, he's a high 4 5 guy, hmm. he's, he's not a 4 4 3, 4 4 5 guy. And you just wonder can he separate? Because he's explosive. His vertical is, I mean, 40 and a half inches. So there's explosion there. But I wonder if the top end speed, if he can get open because he's not the best route runner. So when you don't have burner speed, you're not the best route runner. 
you know, is it going to be enough because you play with good body control and all of those yeah. things? And so it, it's it's a risky pick. It's one that certainly could pay off, but they were definitely going receiver. And when Smith and Jigba wasn't there, they go Quentin Johnson. Uh, well, obviously, uh, to get into Brian Brzee and the Saints pick, which is kind of interesting, man, because there's not like <clears throat> it's it, it's almost a bit odd in that it feels like all of the Saints conversations have already been had because we were all talking about <laughs> Brzee like constantly in the run-up to the pick, and it was one of those weird yep. nights where everything just kind of went according to plan. You weren't forced to trade up, right? Like like, like you talked about, there was no – the Saints never got any intel that somebody else was going to take Brzee, forcing, forcing their hand to get where they uh, wanted to be to go get their guy. It feels like – I mean, we, we read all the quotes from Mickey Loomis on the show yesterday. Uh, when they have a guy – they zero in on him, and they are going to do whatever it takes to get him. And it feels like they think, and we all kind of see from the outside looking in, that Brzee matched the Saints' needs, and that was the focus. And lo and behold, he falls to you at 29. A very nice development for the New Orleans Saints. Yeah, I mean, this has been the pick for like a month. Yeah. I mean, we've been talking about Brian Brzee for it feels like that long, and that's a good thing. That means they got the guy that they really had targeted. And – you always knew that Jalen Carter was going to go ahead of where you were picking. You weren't quite sure. He goes nine, and then you have uh, Cancy from Pittsburgh. You didn't really know maybe he would fall to you, but he goes all the way up at number 19. And so, okay, it's like you have a lot of the guys that you still like. Even when Mozzie Smith went 27, a couple of picks before you, I'm not sure that the Saints were ever incredibly high on him as far as him being the pick. So if you're a Saints fan – you feel really good about where you are. You didn't have to move up yeah. again, and you got a guy that we circled. Yeah. And also, you still have every tight end outside of Dalton Kincaid available, True. right? And so True. now if you want to move up, T, you're at 40. You're only a couple of picks away. Hey, Pittsburgh, you don't need a tight end. We would love to have Michael Mayer be a New Orleans Saint. Ooh. What does it take? What does it take Ooh. to go from 40 to 32? Ooh, yeah. Like, we'll do it. We'll do it. We'll, stuff. So if you get Brian Brzee and you get Michael Mayer in this draft, and let's say you give up, uh, you know, what a third this year, maybe a fifth next year, something like yeah. that to move up 40 to 32 to get Michael Mayer, who could possibly be the best tight end in this draft, if that's where you value him, that's when I'm okay if you move up because you got your guy in round number one. You would get your guy with your second pick, and you wouldn't have to give up a game-changing pick. That is sexy. Now, I'm for the first time this entire draft season, I'm feeling a bit tantalized, Jake. Um, okay, look, when we get back, we'll continue to break down all the first-round action. Uh, we'll get into kind of the biggest surprises, the biggest stories. Obviously, we have to talk Will Levis. Anthony Richardson, how the quarterbacks end up falling. Keep it locked here on OTB. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. Go to All-Star Toyota of BatonRouge.com. All-Star Toyota of BatonRouge.com. The family's so nice, I joined it twice. I tried to get the Toyota scene in a minivan a few years ago. I absolutely love it. It's perfect for me and my family. It looks cool as hell. Uh, the actual, I mean, the new, the newer scene in the 2023s are like, mind-blowingly cool um we, we took one to mobile me rivers jake did and it felt like driving a spaceship uh plus well okay i actually you know what i was about to fall into a minivan hole we don't need to just stay on minivans because the point is they have everything you want at all-star toyota of baton rouge right and whether you're looking it's not just the vehicle selection but what are you looking to do do you want to buy do you want to lease you just need to rent because you got the car in the shop or you want to rent for a vacation it's all there for you at All-Star Toyota Baton Rouge, right off of Airline Highway. Go to All-Star Toyota of Baton Rouge.com today. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Value Ford has $2,000 off MSRP, plus 2.9% APR for 84 months on new 22 Ford Expeditions. And all new Value Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Value Ford is going to do right by you. The world's leaders in obesity research, obesity medicine, and obesity science are right here. We're doing something that no one's ever done or trying to answer a question that no one's ever asked before. Pennington is a real jewel when it comes to research. We are finding the solutions to the world's worst chronic disease, which is obesity. Louisiana needs Pennington Biomedical.
Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance. With the latest in office technology, from desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Hi, I'm Brandon Landry, founder and CEO of Walk. Hi, my name is Dr. Craig Green. This is Ryan Terrio with HudcoRoofing.com. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. No matter how big your commercial roofing job, Hudco can help. My patients come to me because they trust that I can get the job done at a high level. Ryan Terrio and Richard Tilly have the same level of trust when it comes to roofing. If you have a roofing issue, call Hudco Roofing. Give us a call 364-1007 and we'll come to your house and give you a free inspection. Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. On Friday's OTB, we'll recap all the NFL draft round one action and look forward to rounds two and three plus get you ready for baseball in the box. LSU, Bama, off the bench, 7 to 10 a.m., 104.5 ESPN. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Yo, what's happening, y'all? Welcome back to OTB. T-Bob, Taylor Grant here in studio, filling in for Mario. What's up, G? And we got Jake Hester live, boots on the ground over there in Kansas City for this first hour. Jake, uh, let's get into some of the other big storylines uh, from the night last night. So... Uh, I kind of became known, I feel like, over the past week or so that Bryce Young was going to go number one overall. Um, number two, though, was bouncing all over the place, right? All of a sudden, Will Levis was at minus odds. I know Otter took the uh, the first kind of gambling hit of the night as he had gotten Will Anderson at two, at two uh, a while back at, like, plus 400. And then all of a sudden, right before the draft, Will Anderson's minus odds. Otter's starting to count his wins. And then... About 30 minutes before it comes in and CJ Stroud is like <laughs> minus 40,000, you know, 4,000. So, so something happened there. I Credit to, I, I don't know if anybody did a better job of obfuscating or hiding their plans than did the Houston Texans. Selecting at both two and yep. three, taking CJ Stroud, still getting Will Anderson. But um, were you surprised to see Stroud go number two there? I mean, not really, because it was their biggest need. Now, I know Will yeah. Anderson was minus 500 right before like the draft even started to beat the number two pick, and he was plus, I think, 400 earlier in the day. I think that's what I had gotten him at. And Oh, so you too <laughs> suffered the uh, – you, you, you went down the same road that Otter did. Yeah, but I I had same kind of uh, odds for him to be the three pick too, which is crazy, okay. kind of where it was. But like Vegas was wrong. In, in a lot of this, yep. uh, Will Levis, like three days ago, was minus was at 130 
to be the second overall pick. He's still on the board. Mm-hmm. Uh, Anderson was somebody that you know kind of went up there as well, like we just mentioned. I- I'm not surprised though because you need a quarterback. Like yeah. you, you take your quarterback. You are right there at number two. He's your guy. You select him. You don't wait around. It was your biggest need. So you go ahead, you make the move there. The bigger surprise was you got right back into it, and then you select Will Anderson. So you get your guys. I wonder like what went into the process of you know making sure that they get Will Anderson because when you look at what Arizona was going to do, they were going to take a tackle. You felt like you needed to get ahead there of, of number four because – you know, edge rusher, there wasn't a, a ton of guys that were like top 10 guys, but yeah. you felt like maybe it was Tyree Wilson from Texas Tech, but he doesn't go till later to the Raiders. What well, would he go seventh yeah. overall? So, like, they were aggressive. I, I think they made the right move getting the quarterback first there. I didn't think that they would come back to three, but because, you know, the Colts weren't going to take a quarterback. They, they are sorry, our edge rusher. Yeah, they were going to take yeah. a quarterback, and so that's what they did at four. I don't think the Seahawks were going to. Maybe they did. Maybe you had to get ahead of Seattle because Seattle ends up going corner. Maybe they would have gone edge rusher. But look, yeah. regardless, if you're the Houston Texans, you have so many picks to play with, yeah. and you got C.J. Stroud and you got Will Anderson. I don't really care if I'm a fan how you had to do it. I mean, that's the thing, right? Like you amass a war chest, like you amass resources to yeah. spend resources right like if you just sit on them you 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 waste them and so if i'm a texans fan uh i am ecstatic today like like i still don't think the texans are a great organization right and so i don't know if there's any any of this is going to work out uh but this is an exciting day uh you yeah. just got you you know you you, you got the guy who you're going to talk yourself into being your franchise quarterback for the next 15 years and you got a guy who like i feel like we're kind of sleeping on will anderson a little bit maybe, maybe not in mm. How, how do I want to say this? Yeah. He was so incredible two years ago, and then he was still great this year, but it's actually a sign of his greatness that he could put up the numbers that he did this year, and we just yeah. didn't really talk about him that much. Because like before, he it, had Heisman hype and everything else. Right, and, and T, you're going to know this as well. Like He had the year that he couldn't be stopped. Well, what did every single SEC staff do in the offseason? Come up with a plan to stop him. Yeah. Or, you know, to slow him down in a game. So he got all of the attention. Like when you watched an Alabama game, they would have a tight end on his side. They would have the back chip to that side. <laughs> and they're like, hey, like he's just not going to beat us. Like he's not going to take over the game. And so like he still had really good numbers considering he was the point of focus for every offensive coordinator. Um, I, like I got him as the, the number three overall graded player in this draft. And so where he went exactly where I would have had him and – when you look at the system that they want to run, I mean, he he's going to, in theory, fit that need perfectly. So I, I love the pick for for them. I, I think it's the right players. I think they needed a quarterback. They weren't going to get Bryce, so you get the second best one there, and then you get your edge rusher, and then really that's kind of when the the draft had a shakeup. Whenever yep. the Cardinals move out of three, Stroud is the pick there at two, and then it kind of became a little uncertainty there, and you know, of course, your guy. Anthony Richardson goes four overall. I mean, that's the right choice. If, 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 uh, yeah. look, I'm For not, that team, yes. you would not draft Anthony Richardson over Bryce Young or CJ Stroud. So that the entire time, like I, I, I firmly believe that, but if both quarterbacks suck, take the one who's the physical unicorn, right? So like if Will Levis and Anthony, and I get it, Will Levis may have like more experience and more film and slightly better film, but it's still not great film. And so if both mm-hmm. guys have bad film, Take the guy who, uh, you know, can do the backflip, run the fourth. Like, look at Justin Fields, right? We don't know if Justin Fields, how he is as a thrower yet. What we do know is he provided some very dynamic moments last year off of his sheer athleticism. Like, if nothing else, Anthony Richardson can give you that in the short term. And then there's a lot of upside there. What I love is, is I've fallen, Jake, into this roundabout logic where, like, look, you've drafted a ton of guys that have thrown for 4,500 yards in college and 35 touchdowns, and then they end up sucking, okay? <laughs> so, like, I don't know. If, if the guy with the good stats is going to suck, why not draft the bad guy who has the most upside and see what happens? And, and, and the key in all of this is Shane Steichen, okay? And, and it's yeah. not that, um, that Anthony Richardson, that's even a fair comp to call him Justin, Her- uh, J- Justin Herbert or Jalen Hurts. Shane Steichen was uh, in he, – he was in – no, okay, yeah, he's in Los Angeles uh, after Herbert's, no, yes, he, he was with Justin Herbert, he makes him into Rookie of the Year, right? 
Um, then he goes over to Philadelphia. Uh, and it's after Jalen Hurts year one. So when Jalen Hurts took that massive leap, Steichen was right there. And so this is a guy who here recently has proven to get players to play far better in the NFL than their college tape showed, right? So can he do it again with a guy like the physical skill set of Anthony Richardson? Um, maybe, you know, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Now, yeah. I want to be clear. I am not saying, because a lot of people follow that up with like, yeah, I guess Jalen Hurts and Anthony Richardson is a pretty good comp. It's not a good comp at all. It's not, no. Uh, Jalen Hurts was amazing in college. His, I, Joe Burrow buried what should be one of the most insane college football stat lines we've ever heard of. His senior year at Oklahoma, uh, Jalen Hurts completed 70% of his passes, uh, almost 4,000 yards, 32 touchdowns, eight picks. Incredibly, he rushed for 1,300 and 20 touchdowns that year. It's just that we had Joe Burrow going six. six. So I'm not yeah. saying Rich and his Jalen Hurts. I'm saying Shane Steichen has taken two guys with vastly different skill sets, two young quarterbacks, and made them perform far better in the NFL than they had in college. So I, I, I would be very excited if I was an Indianapolis Colts fan. I think a good infrastructure is a good franchise. And look, he also had Phillip Rivers when he was yep. with the Chargers. I mean, when he was a young coach. And so he's had three different styles, completely different style quarterbacks, and they've all been successful. So, like, if I'm the Colts, like, I'm excited in the fact that he's really taken three different guys and, you know, made them better or had better years than they had the year before. And, you know, Mark Dominic, again, like we were talking about, he goes, look, you signed Gardner Minshew who Shane Steichen knows, yep. right? They were with the Eagles together. So if Anthony Richardson's not quite ready, Gardner's somebody that certainly can fill in for four or five weeks, whatever it might be. And then he made a great point. He's like, look, if he ends up just being awful with his skill set, you can still get something. Yes. Because he might not be a great passer. That might not ever happen. You're, you're taking a risk and you're taking a flyer on potential. He said, but something I know he can do is you can create a package for him and he can be a game changer in that way and it's not a complete waste of a pick. And so the risk is worth the reward if you you know make him become the passer you think he can, but at worst you're going to have a freak athlete that you know you can line up back there, create a package for, and it's going to be a mismatch for a lot of different teams. Yeah, and he's like 14 years old. Yeah, like he's about to hit puberty. <laughs> he's only going to get uh, yeah. I mean he can in theory get even bigger get even faster, get even stronger, potentially. Um, all right, let's go to break. When we get back, we'll continue to break down the draft. We'll talk about Will Levis. I want to get to other some of the other kind of interesting picks. Jake, big night for running backs. Uh, let's, let's talk about it next here on OTB. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. Go to Donaldson Glass and Body, dgbauto.com, dgbauto.com. Love the guys and gals over there at Donaldson Glass and Body, man. You go to dgbauto.com, the website. You can talk to Kenny Frederick right there on the site and uh, line up whatever you need done with your vehicle. And it's everything, man. Your one-stop service shop, so tires, glass, wheels, brakes, closure repair, 24-7 coin paint, all of it. If you get in an accident, um, the body shop's the best in the state. Put down on anything. Uh, go to Donosol Glass and Body today. They've been at it since 1977, man, taking care of you. And look, they know, man, happy customers, repeat customers. You can trust them. They're just trying to get done what's best for you and your family and your vehicle. Donosol Glass and Body, DGBauto.com. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. There it is. The extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five star sales, service, and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes Benz Vans. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance with the latest in office technology from desktop to production segment units. Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. 
Each year, Guarantee Media hosts a Radiothon to benefit Dreams Come True, the local organization that grants dreams to Louisiana kids suffering life-threatening illnesses and their families. We've interviewed these incredible kids and their stories warm our hearts. And none of it would be possible without your help. So we're asking for your support in our effort to making more dreams come true. Each year, our Dreams Come True Radiothon is powered by the Baton Rouge Clinic. Visit GuaranteeMedia.com to pledge your support today and thank you. Hey there, little buddy. What's the matter? What's the matter? My windows, siding, and my door. That's what's the matter. Relief windows can fix all that. I got you. Pop, pop. What's up? Oh my gosh, look. Curb appeal. That's a good looking neighborhood. Reliefwindows.com. <laughs> Hey, what's up, y'all? It's that time again. It's heating up. Your boat's getting ready to come out and spend all summer on the water. It's time to take your boat to the next level with Front to Back Boat Service, where if you want an incredible custom speaker install, it's going to blow people away in the water that's there for you. You want an HD sonar where you can see the fish under the water before you cast, beat all your friends, that's there for you at Front to Back Boat Service. So don't put it off. We got the parts in right now. Get them now before they go back on back order. Front to back boat service. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated. Charles Hanniger joins us for the Friday edition of Handy Time. We started with Jimmy Ott's game time at 10 a.m. from Rafino's. Scott Rabelais is with us, and we'll be taking a look at the first round of the NFL draft. Handy Time, noon weekdays, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to OTB. Uh, T-Bob, Grant, Taylor here in the studio. We were just chopping it up during the commercial break. Uh, Jake can hear us. We can't hear him during the commercial. I can't. And I could see him shaking his head as I was asking, what in the hell were the Falcons doing taking B. John Robinson, a running back, at eight? Jameer Gibbs going to the Lions at 12. Don't we all know that running backs like just don't matter that much anymore? That you can get a guy who's basically going to be that guy later on? Like, I, I have a weird thing with the running backs in this class where Bijan and Jameer are awesome, right? But I'm almost dinging the top guys because of how many good guys there are in this draft. Like, they are awesome, but are they that much more awesome than the, you know, the 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 thing that we've talked about in the run-ups is just how quality... This overall class is Jake. Why sell me on Bijan Robinson today? Why? Do, why is this a good yeah. pick? I mean, I'm having to sit here listening to you three stooges talk about <laughs> running backs. I can't respond to it. And no, look, I understand the question, but Bijan Robinson is is different than the rest of the backs. Like, mm -hmm. I do agree with you, T. Like three through ten, who's available now? There's not a huge difference, and you can get a really good player. Bijan Robinson might have been the best overall player in this draft as far as grade and actual Damn. when you when you watch the tape and you're talking about okay who's the guy that checks the most boxes do he graded out at 96% last year what 96% yeah, i mean Steve he's Sarkisian different sucks dude uh, yeah oh yeah and i'm about to tell you a lot of reasons why so he had 1580 yards 1,077 of those yards came after contact. Wow. 68% of his yards came after contact. So it wasn't a scheme thing. This was just a player being Superman. Also, he averaged 16 and a half yards per catch. That's good for a receiver. You know how many times Sark threw him the ball? 19. So he had 19 catches, had 314 yards. And that's the only time that they gave him the ball in the passing game because he doesn't have bad hands. So it's not that situation. They just did not make it a point of emphasis in their offense. And you have a guy averaging 16 and a half yards per catch. This 
this guy is a difference maker. If we talked about true backs that you take in the top 10, it is B. John Robinson. I, I love everything about his game. I'm fully on board with the Falcons selecting him. I hate the fact that we're going to have to talk about him now for the next five years because he's going to be in the division. So, no, B. John Robinson, I, he could have been selected almost anywhere in this draft tee, and I would have been okay with it because – when you grade out at 96%, you break that many tackles and you have, you know, true three down ability like that. He's just, he's different. And, you know, the measurables, I'm sitting here and I'm looking at it, 446 at 217 pounds, 37 inch vertical. There's just a lot to like about B. John yeah. Robinson. Uh, I don't like this. Uh, you know, I was just coming here all ready to crap on the Falcons who drafted running back early, but uh, damn. Um, well, and I also heard y'all talk about the the Lions pick, yes. and I heard y'all talk about who they have. Well, well, Jameer Swift, Gibbs you're, you're, and Jack Campbell, very interesting first round for the Lions. But stick on Jack stick Campbell, on. like I mean, come on, Jack Campbell, like he he was always going to be a Lion, like yeah, an exactly, Iowa middle exactly, linebacker yeah. with Dan Campbell being the head coach. Yeah. Like they they couldn't wait to turn that card <laughs> in, and it was it, look it, it it was a reach for sure. But he's a tackling machine, and he fits what Dan Campbell is wanting to do. So for Jameer Gibbs, this isn't like you know, a, a three down back. This is not even like just a third down back. Now he can probably give you something on first and second down, but he's going to move all over the place. Like you're going to see him in the slot. You're yeah. going to see him line up all over the board. He's almost going to be positionless and, and not like in a bad way, but he can, if you want him to run between the tackles, I mean, he can do that. He's, he's really like a perfect blend going back to grades. He graded out 84% in the rush game, 83% in the receiving game. So super solid. in, in both of those things, He's being compared to Alvin Kamara because he runs with that smoothness. And, you know, when Alabama so, said, hey, we're struggling, we need something offensively last year because they didn't have receivers, they would put him in the slot, they throw him a now, and he would go. He had 44 catches a year ago. I mean, that's a huge, huge number. So I, I, I see him being a complete mismatch in the passing game, uh, what he can give you between the tackles. You've got Montgomery Swift that can kind of do that. I mean, you lose a Jamal Williams and you go sign a big free agent running back and then you draft one. And so they feel like that's going to be a big loss for them not having Williams. But I understand Jameer Gibbs because he's not just a running back. I mean, he's really going to be kind of all over the place. And, you know, Jameson Williams is the guy that's going to be out for the first six games. So you need offensive firepower. Now, you know, 12 feels feels high i thought he was going to be 24 25 yeah. range but look the lions showed you that their draft board is different than mel mm -hmm. kuyper and todd yeah. mcshay and all these other guys because campbell's somebody that was on mel kuyper's board i think 55 yeah. overall t yeah no no he that was um you know and i always love when the draft experts give their day after grades and it's it's basically just an exercise in like, did they do what I said was right? And if mm -hmm. they did it, they get it back or whatever. So yeah, Kuiper, Kuiper, I think had that in the head scratcher category, <laughs> which of course he did. Cause like you said, he was 50 on the board. Um, two things. If you're a Deandre Swift fantasy owner in some sort of legacy league or something, I'm sorry. You're, you're, you know, you're, you're uh, boy. Here's what Brad yep. Holmes had to say on Deandre Swift. That's a Lions GM quote. He's still on our roster. He's still a part <laughs> of our team. He's still under contract with us. He's a dynamic football player. It hasn't really changed the math there yet, but it's early. Uh, DeAndre Swift, they're obviously <laughs> done with him in Detroit. Wait, guys, I forgot this on B. John Robinson. This is mind-blowing. You're not going to believe that this is true, but I have triple-checked it. It is true. B. John Robinson is the first offensive first-round pick from Texas since Vince Young in 2006. Texas has not put an offensive first rounder in the NFL in uh, 17 years. B. John Robinson breaking the curse for the Longhorns. So uh, I, I was like, when I read that, I thought, no, 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 this is a fake account. I had to dive in, make sure it was the action. And I'm like, I'm like looking, I'm like, oh my God, no, it is, dude. Uh, all right, look, we, we probably, look, uh, uh, most shows today are going to start talking about Will Levis. We've just been kind of free flowing, but let's arrive here at the Levis talk because. Um, being stranded in the green room has to be one of the all time bad feelings, right? It's, it, yeah. it, it reminds me of like one of those nightmares where, you know, you show up at school without clothes on or something, or everybody's kind of looking at you, whispering about, you can't hear what they're saying, but you know, they're talking about you. It's quite literally 
what's going on with Levis. And it sucks because he's not even the only guy. Like, who else was it? They had uh, Brian Branch is still in there, Joey Porter Jr., yep. Keon White. Like, there are others, but they don't play quarterback, right? And so, what a weird few days for Will Levis where you had the Reddit post that pushed up his number one overall odds. He was minus odds at two overall, and now he doesn't even go in the first round. Gosh, I mean, the, the scenes of the guy always waiting in, in the green oh, room, it's so just, it, it's awful. I don't care what you feel about the player. It can be your worst enemy, and, like, you feel bad about that guy. And the scenes were bad last night, and he didn't go to Carolina one overall. Okay, that, that makes sense. Okay, he doesn't go to Houston. That makes sense. Even the Colts fit. Would he have been a fit? I think he would have, but you like the Anthony Richardson fit better. So it's like, okay, well, you know, Tennessee at 11. I thought they, Tennessee at 11 for sure. Yeah. And they don't select him. And then, like, once you start looking at the board, you're like, well, okay, certainly the commanders. Okay, they're not going to like Sam Howell better than Will Levis, right? Well, commanders don't go quarterback. And then you're like, okay, well, hell, uh, Tampa Bay. They got Baker Mayfield and Kyle Trask. and They go defensive tackle. So, like, if I'm sitting in the green room and I'm not selected, like, I'm already mad. And then in my head, I'm like, they just took Baker Mayfield and Kyle Trask over me. <laughs> Like, that's well, what they think of my game. Well, I will say this. To me, Tampa is taking Caleb Williams and or Drake May and or Michael Penix over him, right? Like, yeah. Tampa, to me, is very clearly kind of checking out on this year. They got the Super Bowl, so they have, uh, what, what do I want to call it? They have, like, a buffer against people being really angry yeah. at them or whatever. Like, they can afford a down year and then maybe trade up. Like, yeah, I feel like Tampa is firmly set on next year's quarterback class. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. And next year's quarterback class is going to have what we think to be, you know, three elite prospects at least, and maybe even more. And, and that can play itself out. But you're probably on to something there, T. And then even like, it, you know, in the 20s there, I'm like, you know, Minnesota, maybe, maybe, yeah. like, you know, to back up Kirk and, and maybe they, they allow him to sit there and wait. And once they didn't select him, and they go receiver, which they absolutely should have. They should not have gone quarterback. They need help. You lose Adam Thielen. You need somebody to help Jets out there in Minnesota. It's like, I, I, I don't know. And T, and I'm sitting here, and while you were talking, I was looking at the second-round picks and what we have coming up, and I don't know. Like, Pittsburgh just drafted Kenny Pickett. Yep. Okay. Arizona's got Kyler Murray. Detroit's happy with Jared Goff. Mm -hmm. Colts just go Anthony Richardson. Mm. The Rams – maybe oh, okay. Matthew Stafford, okay. a little bit older, yeah. obviously, but I don't see like a for sure landing spot for him. Um, Tennessee at 41, if he gets there, I, I would have, you know, they have Malik Surely. Willis. He took him the third round last year, but maybe 41 could be the first time we see Will Levis actually get out of the green room. Speaking of Adam Thielen, how worried should Saints fans be about Carolina? Oof, I, I like the roster, and I think it's smart to bring in guys like Adam Thielen, like DJ Chark, like Hayden Hurst, uh, Miles Sanders. You knew you were going to go quarterback. You traded up to do so, so you went and got veteran pieces that are not in maybe – like Adam Thielen certainly like on the other end of his career, but he's still a very good football player. Yeah. He's a veteran football player. Hayden Hurst had a solid year with Cincinnati last year. DJ would have had a bigger year, but he gets hurt. But when he played, he was really, really good. Miles Sanders for a running back probably in his prime. So you tried to stack pieces with that rookie quarterback. And we've talked about it before, like the roster isn't awful. And they weren't picking at one because they were the worst team in the NFL. They traded to get yeah. to that point. So a little bit, I mean – it's 1A and 1B, in my opinion, as far as rosters. Mm. All right, look, uh, let's do this. Let's go to break. When we get back, we'll have Jake for one more segment, then we'll let him go. He'll be on. Uh, I'm sure you're going to be checking in on other shows here on 104.5 like you did yesterday throughout the day, so be on the lookout for that. Remember, don't forget, Jake is joining us live from his bathroom right now. That's what a real professional does. Look at that setup. You would have never guessed. Uh, more OTB coming up next. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. Get Gordon and get it done. That's right. Join the G team. Okay. Uh, when you need somebody who is going to fight for you in the courtroom, get you what you deserve, you want Gordon McKernan injury return. It's called 225 888 8888. 225 888 
888-888. Now it can be any area code throughout Louisiana, right? 318-888-8888. Uh, you already know. Um, it's all about the eights. Uh, but look, the bottom line is it's all about him fighting for you. It's all about him getting it done in the court. And it's all about him supporting those who get it done on the basketball court, in the football field, or wherever athletic realm they exist in. That's why they call him the Gord Father of NIL. Go follow Gordon McKernan on uh, social media at Get Gordon, and you can see some of the great content that he has going down right now as LSU continues to make NIL waves and, well, the entire women's basketball team is on the G team. Coach Mulkey is. You can be too. Get Gordon. Get it done today. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, (laughs) playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. For over a century, local broadcasting has evolved with the needs of the community. We move past the stigmas of opinion journalism and bring the most relevant news online, on air, and on the go. You have trusted us with your news, sports, weather, and entertainment. Trust us to keep moving with you. Text TV to 52886 and tell Congress local broadcasting is here to stay. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance. With the latest in office technology, from desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. Hi, I'm Brandon Landry, founder and CEO of Walk. Hi, my name is Dr. Craig Green. This is Ryan Terrio with HudcoRoofing.com. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. No matter how big your commercial roofing job, Hudco can help. My patients come to me because they trust that I can get the job done at a high level. Ryan Terrio and Richard Tilly have the same level of trust when it comes to roofing. If you have a roofing issue, call Hudco Roofing. Give us a call 364-1007 and we'll come to your house and give you a free inspection. there little buddy what's the matter what's the matter my windows siding and my door that's what's the matter relief windows can fix all that i got you pop pop what's up oh my gosh look curb appeal that's a good looking neighborhood hey it's hunt join me for a friday edition of the hunt palmer show presented by corks cajun fried fish and shrimp full reaction to the draft and really locking in on lsu and alabama from the box hunt palmer show on friday presented by corks one to three weekdays 104.5 espn baton rouge All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. What's happening, y'all? Welcome back to OTB. T-Bob Grant Taylor hanging out with you in studio. Jake is live in Kansas City reporting from his bathroom. Uh, We're big winners for having Jake's perspective on all of this. Um, But last night, uh, nobody was a bigger winner than the Philadelphia Eagles as the New Orleans Saints continue 
to make the Eagles franchise incredible. I mean, the only reason they were there to be in a position to catch a falling Jalen Carter, who, like, probably is the best player in the draft. Or could, you could make, I should say probably, you, it's an easy argument to make that he is actually the best player in the draft, right? If you really wanted to do that. The only reason why the Eagles were somehow there to catch a falling Carter was, again, because of the New Orleans Saints. Um, but, but hey, whatever, man. Uh, credit to Philly. The rich got richer as uh, it's, it's not even just it's, it's, it's not even just Jalen Carter. I mean, uh, then they come back to get Nolan Smith at 30. So now they got Jordan Davis, Kobe Dean, Jalen Carter, Nolan Smith, the UGA Eagles uh, looking real strong right now, Jake. I mean, it's almost embarrassing, the fact that they were able to select both those players last night. Jalen Carter, if he doesn't have the off-the-field stuff, is a top three pick. Yeah. Like, I truly believe that. We had some Bears fans that traveled to Kansas City sitting in front of us last night for the show. And when Carter was there, they were so excited. They're like, look, we made this trip when we had the number one pick. That's where we thought they were going to go. They were like, he fell to us. And they were celebrating. And then the trade comes in. You go one spot back and you get a fourth rounder in next year's draft. Horrible draft compensation yeah, by the true, Bears. True. And I do like their pick. Uh they go and get a tackle from Tennessee. I know a lot of people are like, oh, I didn't have him as my top tackle. Watch the tape. He's better than the guys that went behind him. So I actually like their pick, but they had a chance to get Jalen Carter, decided not to. And it's a real need for the Chicago Bears, but so was offensive tackle. The Bears tackle, have a lot so. of needs. The Eagles have no needs. Yes. That's what's funny in this. Yes. Like, the Bears are desperate for everything. The Eagles, we said it. They, they don't have it. Like, what do they need? They're good everywhere. Yeah. And now they just add maybe the best player in the draft on a defensive line that's already overwhelming. And then they get Nolan Smith at 30 oh, that oh he's he's a top 15 player in this draft. Like, if he would have gone eight to Atlanta, I would have been like, okay, yeah, maybe a little bit high, but that makes sense. At eight, and he goes to 30 to a team that doesn't really have any holes in their roster. I mean, you go to Philadelphia, and, I, and I'm looking at my chart. They needed defensive tackle, and they needed defensive end, like as far as their needs. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, they get Jalen Carter, and they and they get Nolan Smith there. So they feel what they had is their biggest needs with two players because of different reasons fall on their board, and they have to be feeling mighty satisfied right now with their draft. Uh, yeah, the Eagles hive. Uh Plus, there's not that many good NFC teams out there right now. I mean, we we were kind of joking about it last night. Derek Carr is an unquestioned top five quarterback in the NFC right now. I mean, put together the list. If, if Jalen Hurts, Dak Prescott, whose own fan base thinks he's awful. Um, who's after Dak in the NFC right now, boys? Grant, I, I hear you. you yeah, you start really throwing out names like Geno Smith breaks. and like, others. Yeah. Okay, Geno, which credit to Geno. We all love Geno's story, and he was objectively very good. But it's a sign of the times if Geno's already coming up at number three in your half of the conference. And he, I know, I know, Grant, I see, I see well, the steam I, I coming mean, out of your ears look, here. I, I know he was injured. I'd put Matt Stafford still over Geno probably. I know ah, he's old, but I don't know. Everything about the Rams feels so checked out to me. No, it, it does. I'm just saying, like, pure talent like, right, standpoint, I'd probably say Stafford's <laughs> like, better. We did it. We're cool. Stafford's like, all right, yeah. I proved it. Like, I could win. It was just Detroit. Uh, Sean McVay's like, I don't know, man. I, I got in this game so early. I'm kind of ready to be done. McVay wants to go to me. Like, I, so I, I, I can't put Stafford there. Not, not on my personal list. I see why you do, but, but I can't go there. Um, all right, let's try to map this out for real, though, real quick. Okay, so Hurts at one. Let's just say Dak two. Are we going Geno three? Is there anybody else? I mean, ugh, Kyler Murray, maybe. I mean, I don't I know. <laughs> so Derek Carr is easily in there. So whatever. The point is, the Jared Eagles Goff. look like. Uh, yeah, okay, Jared Goff. I mean, yeah, kind of, right? So um, the point is, the Eagles look like they're positioned to run away with the NFC once again. Uh, Jake, we got about a minute and a half left. Anything else? Any other takes that you want to get off your chest? here on the morning show before we let you go and you uh, come back on some of the other shows. All right, so the Saints' biggest needs for me before last night, defensive tackle, defensive end, tight end, add a receiver, and maybe interior offensive line for depth. You get the defensive tackle. Where are you looking at, at defensive end right now? You still have some players that are available, but I, I can't help but to look at what's still available at tight end. Michael Mayer, Luke Musgrave, Darnell Washington, Sam Laporta, Tucker Craft from South Dakota State, 
real value there. You can get a stud at 40. So if that's where you want to go, there's certainly going to be available. Keon White might still be available. He's at the draft, poor son of a gun. And if you want to go defensive end, he's still going to be there possibly. Um, so everything that you want is still available and you got the pick that you wanted in the defensive tackle. So right now the saints are sitting really nice. Unless you like how in the world is Michael Mayer there and you want to trade up, you don't have to, you can still get one of those tight ends at 40 without having to move and keep your picks. And so the saints are in a great spot and they didn't panic and their guy fell to them. Yeah, I agree. Uh, we'll talk to Ross Jackson to kick off uh, here in about five minutes, kick off the next hour. Ross, obviously host of Locked on Saints. Can't wait to get his takes on it. Would he trade up for Michael Mayer? That certainly feels, uh, because, you know, just the, the the lizard fan brain that I have. I'm like, ooh, offensive player? Like, hell yeah, dude. Like Derek Carr, I give him a weapon. Okay, I'm in. Um, Jake, thank you so much, man. Uh, where can everybody find you today? Oh, wait, you know what? I screwed this up. I think I ran against the clock. I'll tell everybody. Holla, man. You have a great day. <laughs> uh, more. Wait, okay. So, yeah, okay. Uh, we're going to start with Ross next. Hey, I do want to remind you to go to Accutemp of Baton Rouge, AccutempBR.com. That's AccutempBR.com uh, for all your AC, heating, and electrical needs to Accutemp of Baton Rouge. Uh, they are the absolute best, man. Go look at the online reviews, okay? It's absolutely fantastic. Ask about the Star Club membership while you're in there. That's where you pay a fa- flat monthly fee and um and 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 they just do everything for you like they check up they stay on top of your system they avoid any catastrophic issues and uh you don't pay for well you don't like pay for them to come out right they do it all of their own accord it's the best check out that star club membership remember right now we extended through the month of april so a couple days left here if you get that new ac install you get a free premium clean air pack it's 1800 dollars value agatem br off the bench with Hester and T Bob. At Corval Toyota in Opelousas, you can get 3.99% financing on select 2023 models. And we also have a large selection of pre owned inventory. So come on down to Happy Town. That's Corval Toyota in Opelousas, Happy Town, USA. Each year, Guarantee Media hosts a radiothon to benefit Dreams Come True, the local organization that grants dreams to Louisiana kids suffering life-threatening illnesses and their families. We've interviewed these incredible kids and their stories warm our hearts. And none of it would be possible without your help. So we're asking for your support in our effort to making more dreams come true. Each year, our Dreams Come True radiothon is powered by the Baton Rouge Clinic. Visit GuaranteeMedia.com to pledge your support today and thank you. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's that time again. It's heating up. Your boat's getting ready to come out and spend all summer on the water. It's time to take your boat to the next level with front-to-back boat service, where if you want an incredible custom speaker install, it's going to blow people away in the water that's there for you. You want an HD sonar where you can see the fish under the water before you cast, beat all your friends, that's there for you at front-to-back boat service. So don't put it off. We got the parts in right now. Get them now before they go back on back order. Front to back boat service. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, Our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance with the latest in office technology from desktop to production segment units Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. Hi, I'm Brandon Landry, founder and CEO of Walker. Hi, my name is Dr. Craig Green. This is Ryan Terrio with HudcoRoofing.com. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. No matter how big your commercial roofing job, Hudco can help. My patients come to me because they trust that I can get the job done at a high level. Ryan Terrio and Richard Tilly have the same level of trust when it comes to roofing. If you have a roofing issue, call Hudco Roofing. Give us a call 364-1007 and we'll come to your house and give you a free inspection.
Where we go? All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Jacob Hester and T-Bob Hebert. Yeah, 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 yeah! Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Hey, they said I gotta come off the bench. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, what's happening, y'all? Welcome in hour number two of OTB. Uh, Let's dive straight in, folks. Uh, We've been recapping the draft all uh, today. A lot of exciting news breaking last night. Um, It's it's a weird bag for the New Orleans Saints because I think you should be very pleased by how last night went down. I mean, Jake just ended the hour basically laying out. You got your guy and you're well positioned to get uh, somebody who you're targeting here early in this second round. Um, But it's it's almost like a bit weird in that there's not a ton of conversation points because we've talked so much about Brzee up to this point. Let's bring in a guy who talks about the New Orleans Saints every single day. The man himself, Ross Jackson at Ross Jackson. Nola host of Locked on Saints podcast. He's the absolute best. Ross, what's up, brother? Thank you so much for joining us today. What's up, homie? Good morning, man. Thanks so much as always for having me on. Hey, look, I know that the New Orleans Saints are the headline right right now, but yeah. I do want to just right quick give a big shout out to Kim Mulkey and the LSU women's basketball team for Landon Haley Van Lith. Woo. I can't wait to get some games this season. Yeah, I um I have it. I have okay, I actually have that in this hour to get to that. It kind of sucks that it got buried by the NFL draft because right. uh I mean it well, it's fascinating on multiple counts, Ross. Not only is she awesome, right? So already now you you you're you're forming a bit of a super team uh with her mm-hmm. Angel Reese Flash and everybody else. It's like not only is she great, but in this new age of NIL where we're learning that female athletes are arguably the biggest winners in terms of yep. what they w- were able to do versus what they're able to do now. Nowhere has a higher concentration of big names than do the LSU Tigers. I mean, four of the top eight now. Angel Reese, we all know about Livy Dunn. Uh, Flage is only, continued, is only going to continue to grow in value as her music career, YouTube career continues to take off. And now mm-hmm. you had Haley Van Lith. They're all like, they're all young. Not that this matters, but it does matter in NIL. They're all like very attractive. It's just insane what is going on right now at LSU when it comes to uh, the these women, you know, just really becoming superstars. It's, awesome. it's wild. Yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. I cannot wait. I can't wait to get to some games this year. I can't wait to see them all play. It's going to be a dope year. Hey, and they might not be done either. So we'll see how everything goes yeah. after this weekend too. Yeah, you're not like, I mean, look, you still got to beat South Carolina, right? That is the one thing that, that you know, mm-hmm. but whatever. We'll, 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 we'll get there. We have plenty of time to get there. <laughs> um, uh, let, let's talk Saints. And we get to some general uh, draft thoughts from last night, Ross. But first, I want to I highlight Saints. You, okay, you talk about the Saints every single day in depth. I can't fathom how much you've talked about Brian Brzee up to this point already. <laughs> what more? Like, like, give us the summary of all the conversations you've had over the past month. Why should St. Sids be so excited, Brzee? Was this the right pick? Yeah, I've had at least one Brian Brzee segment in every week of the show for the last two months. Oh. And part of that, and part of that is just because it seemed very likely that Brian Brzee was going to be on the Saints radar, if nothing else. And and I'll tell you, like some of the things that you can you can quickly highlight about him. Uh, obviously, uh, a lot of his story is going to center around his adversity or the mm-hmm. adversity that he's faced and his ability to be able to come out on on, on the other side of it. I don't want to you know reprise trauma and things like that, like over and over again on the airwaves for the guy. But I will say that speaking to him last night after the draft, you could just see somebody that came out on the other side of things that would challenge any human being as a not so hardened, but very matured man. And wow. I think that that's one of the things that the New Orleans Saints absolutely love about Brian Brzee. He's an attacking three tech style interior defensive lineman with experience who has played up and down the defensive line in, in heavy, heavy rotations in three man fronts, odd man fronts, uh, or excuse me, three man fronts, four man fronts, bear fronts, Oki fronts. He's done it all. But one of the things that is kind of a main cornerstone criterion for the New Orleans Saints is makeup. And this guy is made of the best. And so it, it, it was a very exciting to get to see him and speak with him last night in a night that was so very exciting for him. But it's clear to see where he'll translate on the field uh, as well. Uh, so now, uh, Ross, we, we kind of talked about Jake, but I mean, you could go a lot of different ways here for it. We know the Saints, if they have a guy that they are going to trade up, Mickey Loomis, whatever, we all know that. Uh, 
<laughs> Michael Mayer is still out there. Now, am I mm -hmm. guilty of just falling into the old easy, like, ooh, offensive piece, let's go? Like, like, would you trade up to get Michael Mayer here early in this second? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, you know, Dennis Allen said that when the Cincinnati Bengals went up on the clock last night, that there were still two guys that were there that they felt like, okay, no matter what, we're going to get one of the guys. And Brian Brzee was one of those guys. And so they were able to go with him at 29. But there is a chance that Miles Murphy, who was taken at 28 by the Cincinnati Bengals, was the other guy. But there's also a chance that he wasn't. And there's a good, good, good chance that Felix and Yudike Ozama, as well as Nolan Smith, the two edge rushers that were taken after Brian Brzee, weren't those guys either, considering they don't really check the boxes in terms of the prototype. They're undersized edge rushers at the next level. Uh, for for at the Saints next level in terms yes. of their system. And so if a guy like Michael Mayer was the other target that could have potentially fallen, well, he's still on the board going in this the, the going into this second round. And I think that adding an offensive weapon next is something that would benefit the New Orleans Saints. I think going to their offensive line would benefit them as well. A guy like Osiris Torrance out of yeah, Florida or, you know, of course, who. Yeah, formerly of the, the Raging Cajuns, who hasn't yeah. allowed a sack in his entire career. Steve Avila out of TCU is another kind of road grader offensive lineman that they could go with. So they have the ability to continue to address their trenches, but I wouldn't rule out the opportunity and the idea here for an offensive weapon. And I look at guys like Michael Mayer, of course, uh, Darnell Washington, the big tight yeah. end slash, I mean, almost offensive lineman, that guy uh, out of Georgia. And then also another guy that I'll point out would be Cedric Tillman, the wide receiver out of Tennessee, or Jalen Hyatt, the wide receiver out of Tennessee for that matter because of the connection to Cody Burns, a New Orleans Saints wide receiver coach, formerly with the Tennessee Volunteers. We're talking to Ross Jackson at Ross Jackson Nola on Twitter, host of the Locked on Saints podcast. Um, Ross, I asked Jake the same question hour one. Uh, the Carolina Panthers get Bryce Young number one overall. No, no, no surprise there. It kind of became clear the past week. Um, mm -hmm. How worried should New Orleans Saints fans be about the Panthers going forward? Yeah, I, I think you're at least a little worried about the fact that there's another mobile quarterback in the division, and we know that that hasn't necessarily been the Saints defense's strength, although it hasn't been as big of a weakness in the recent years as we, you know, as we look back to, let's say, the RG3 days and things like that, right? You're so far away, so, so long ago. And so I, I think that, you know, you, you look at the mobile quarterback side of it, you look at the dual quarterback side, the dual threat side of it all. He's also highly accurate. He's incredibly athletic. I mean, he's a smart processor, quick processor. He's a very good quarterback. So I think in any case, you're a little bit worried about that. How well does he translate to the NFL game? How well can the Carolina Panthers build around them who around him, who have gotten at least off to a very good start in terms of their, their coaching situation. Like Bryce Young enters one of the best quarterback coaching systems out there uh, in, in, in the NFL. And so I think that that's something maybe to be concerned about. But look, the Saints have a lot of experience creating an offensive attack to support an undersized quarterback, just in terms of height when it came to Drew Brees. It was always that question about Drew Brees being you know shorter than his offensive line, all those other things. So they're incredibly well positioned and versed in what it takes to disrupt sure. the game of a smaller passer and a five foot 10 Bryce Young is a guy that you would be able to get after that. Now you add a six foot five interior defensive lineman and we know that the New Orleans Saints love their defensive linemen tall six foot four and above that puts them in a pretty good position now especially with the addition of Brian Brzee who's a great interior pass rusher can put pressure right in the face of Bryce Young off the line of scrimmage and right up the middle of the offensive line. So they should have the pieces that they need to be able to counteract sort of what Bryce Young is. But either way, I mean, he's an incredibly talented quarterback. And the big question is, how can Carolina build around him as they move forward? Yeah, I hadn't even considered that. I kind of love that, though, in a lot of ways. It is uh, some sort of slight counterpunch to Bryce Young. Brzee mm -hmm. represents specifically. Um, Ross, have you ever played Settlers of Catan board game? Yes, a long time ago okay. well, and July. for a long time because yes. that's what, yeah. <laughs> it's, it, well, it's, okay, the point is, I'm sorry, I've stepped all over that. I screwed you. But, no, but look, look, it's awesome. It's so much fun, but it causes massive arguments, right, amongst the friends. And mainly the arguments are based off of uh, what people call king making, where you make mm -hmm. a bad trade and you set somebody up, else up to win the game. Well, the king-making legacy of the New Orleans Saints continued last night as the Philadelphia Eagles got Jalen Carter at nine. Ross, how's anybody supposed to compete with this Eagles team? Like, is there anyone yeah, that can challenge them this year? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, they, they're they they're loading up quite a bit, and then they turn around and they go and get 
you know, his teammate at 30 as well, because they, they're coming off of a Super Bowl appearance and Nolan Smith, who's a, a, a perfect fit for that sort of undersized but speedy pass rushing defense of the Philadelphia Eagles that had over 70 sacks last year. And yeah, they lost some of those defensive pieces like Javon Hargrave, who's now a San Francisco 49er, but goodness, you replace him with a Jalen Carter. You put him next to, you know, a Jordan Davis, you add, you know, this sort of Philadelphia, you know, Philadelphia Bulldogs yeah. defense that they, that they're building over there. And, and it's ridiculous. It's incredible. We'll look and see if maybe Kelly Ringo is the next, you know, pick for the, for the Philadelphia <laughs> Eagles, but but man, I, I do think, you know, with 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 Jalen Hurts on um, those two wide receivers that they have over there and A.J. Brown, who's already got his bag and Devontae Smith, who, who should be next. Uh, you know, you look for them to continue to add in their running back room. Their defense is stout. Their offensive line is stout. They're the team to beat in the NFC again this year. And they've just continued to to add to it. Unfortunately, the New Orleans Saints did play an unfortunate role in it with that uh, that top 10 pick trade. Uh, Ross, how about this? Um, I know that you obviously host Locked On Saints, but I know you do a ton of Locked On uh, work behind the scenes. How insane mm -hmm. is it right now? What do y'all have going down on the network? Oh, it was it was insane, but so much fun last night. We have our college shows that are producing quick interviews for every selection to give sort of a little bit of personal insight on all of these players and who they are coming out of the collegiate ranks. We have a live show hosted by Kyle Krabs and Joe Marino, the draft dudes that like covers all throughout every pick. We're bringing in NFL hosts and doing interviews with them after each selection to talk about the fit and how that player contributes and makes that NFL team better and more and more and more and more. So there, there's a ton going on here over at Locked On. And, and thankfully, I get to I get to stick my fat little sausage fingers in all of it <laughs> and, uh, you know, be able to, to, to play a role in watching, you know, a, a lot of people live out their dreams while a lot of people live out their dreams uh, being selected in the NFL draft. So it's a cool thing to be a part of. What's the best way? Because, you know, I I, like when I listen to Locked On, I have, I have like the individual podcast. What's the best way to to kind of find out? What's a good landing spot to find it all? If I, if I want to see these interviews with the different players and everything, what, what what's the best way to find it? Yeah, if you head over to Locked On NFL Draft, that okay. YouTube page actually has a playlist now with all of the uh, different you know NFL interviews, all the collegiate interviews, things like that. That's going to be the easiest place to kind of catch all of the videos. If you want to see all of the different podcasts and things like that that are available, you can go to LockedOnPodcasts.com. Just make sure it's plural. It's Locked On Podcasts. Ah, <laughs> yes, the devil's in the details. <laughs> Ross Jackson, details. at Ross Jackson, NOLA, host of Locked On State Podcast. Last one, then I'm letting you out of here. Uh you're good, bud. What was your biggest surprise, piece of interest, storyline from last night? I think it's I think it's the group of outliers. We we knew that this was going to be a tr uh, a draft of outliers it, it, here. You know, you you lead off the draft with Bryce Young, a five foot ten quarterback. Mm. Uh, Will McDonald goes early to, if I remember correctly, the the New York Jets. You have yep. Lucas Van Ness, a guy that never saw any starts in his collegiate career, drafted top fifteen uh, after the Aaron Rodgers trade that boosted the. Uh, the Green Bay Packers from 15 to 13. You have 160, 170 pound cornerback going in the first round and Emmanuel Forbes. You have these edge rushers like Nolan Smith and Felix and UDK Uzama going early. We always see sort of that edge rusher run at the end of the first round, don't we? But that's such a big part of what sort of the storyline of this draft was going in. And it's even, you know, the outliers on the, 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 you know, athletically unique side, like Anthony Richardson going yes. top five and all that, even though that wasn't a surprise, I, I think Anthony Richardson is the quarterback everybody should be willing to bet on because if you get him right, oh, that's huge yeah, uh, for you. A historic, yeah, just a historically impressive player. And so I think it's really the outliers that, you know, thrived in, in the first round in a league that so often we predict more and more and more is becoming less and less risky uh, in the NFL draft. Don't take running backs in the first round. You don't take off ball linebackers in the first round. Jack Campbell went in the first round. You don't take tight ends in the first round. There goes Dalton Kincaid to the Buffalo Bills. I think that, you know, while we sit back sometimes from the outside and try to say, okay, there's the, this prototype, these players are outliers. They may not be quality first rounders because of that. The NFL is saying not so fast because where these kids start is not where they finish in terms of their NFL career. And they're willing to invest in that. That is some fan Fantastic perspective there from our guy, Ross. Go uh, listen to Locked on Saints podcast. Saw him at Ross Jackson Nola. Uh, Ross, keep up the grind, man. Thank you for carving out some time for us this morning. 
and uh, enjoy the rest of the draft, man. My pleasure, dude. Thanks so much for having me on. Always a pleasure to be here with you. Take care, stay safe, and I'll talk to y'all soon. Hell yeah, man. Uh, God, Ross is, I could, I could literally just listen and talk to Ross all day. So good. Um, all right, let's go to break. And when we get back, I, I'm thinking, boys, maybe one more draft. And then, and then maybe we move on a little bit, okay? Maybe, maybe just one more, then we maybe, maybe we move on. Uh, more Off the Bench coming up next. Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Hey, y'all. Uh, I'm here on behalf of the Advanced Eye Center, okay? Uh, the Advanced Eye Center holds, uh, is, excuse me, the only certified vision therapist in the state, okay? And Dr. Zhang is your expert. She's been at this for 44 years, y'all. Holds the highest board certification in the entire state. And you might be saying, well, what is vision therapy? What is vision sports therapy, right? It's, I don't think we fully appreciate uh, a few things. I don't think we fully appreciate all the different elements of vision, be it like depth perception, reaction time, object tracking, right? I don't think we appreciate how our vision, how much impact it has on our everyday life. And this is for anybody. You can go get checked out. But for athletics specifically, right, about 90% of athletics is actually vision-based. And over there at the Advanced Eye Center, they're putting on summer training camps this summer, sports vision therapy training camps, to help maximize your child's potential, okay? Do not let the eyes hold them back. Just grades three through six, seven through 12. Limited availability now. So go find the Advanced Eye Center on Facebook. Act now, Advanced Eye Center. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. I drove myself to the ER, had heart surgery, and drove myself home 24 hours later, feeling fine. Starting running again after the procedure. I'm getting excited thinking about it. I had no pain, nothing. I felt great. And right then and there, I was like, oh my God, I'm back. I'm back. It's just amazing. Ashner Health. Long live you. Hey, it's Matt Musso. Join me Monday through Friday for your daily update on LSU baseball with Musso at the Box, presented by New Orleans Flooring. Wherever you get your podcast, Apple, Spotify, Google, and check out New Orleans Flooring. Two locations, Metairie and Prairieville or nolaflooring.com. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram has $15,000 off all new 2022 1500 SCA trucks. And all new Bayou automotive vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. If you need sales or service, the crew at Bayou is going to do right by you. Hello, Samantha, dear, I hope you're feeling fine. And it won't be long until I'm with you all the time. But until then, I spend my life. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Hey there, little buddy. What's the matter? What's the matter? My windows, siding, and my door. That's what's the matter. Relief windows can fix all that. I got you. Pop, pop. What's up? Oh my gosh, look. Curb appeal. That's a good looking neighborhood. Reliefwindows.com. <laughs> Hey, what's up, y'all? It's that time again. It's heating up. Your boat's getting ready to come out and spend all summer on the water. It's time to take your boat to the next level 
Matt Moscona inviting you to join us for Friday's AFR presented by Don Juan Cigar Bar. Recap in round one of the NFL Draft preview in the weekend and looking ahead to LSU, Bama, and baseball. Join us, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Yo, what's going on, y'all? Welcome back to OTB. Uh, the fellas hanging out with you this morning. Um, we'll probably start to uh, we'll probably start to close out um, some of the draft talk here. Uh, real quick, uh, Scott Dice in the chat says, um, oh, where did he just say? Oh, he says, uh, LSU picked up a great tight end yesterday. Trade as green. Anyone mentioned that yet? Uh, we did talk about it yesterday, but you know, it was very quick. So maybe it does bear re-mentioning as, uh, football hope is in the air. Um, and, and also like, as you think about Darnell Washington being what, like six, eight, like two seventy. uh, uh trade as green has that sort of frame. To work with. I mean, he is quite literally guaranteed 6'8. I've heard him claim 6'9 in interviews. He is someone who is so athletic and good at basketball that Will Wade offered him to LSU. Okay, so think about that. It was years ago. He was a young boy, and yet Wade saw enough in him to offer him a scholarship on the basketball court. We all know the lineage of tight ends that are great at basketball becoming great uh, as football players. He put up excellent stats. Uh, getting trade as green is massive um and he is quite literally massive and, and look it makes sense uh all brian kelly does is put tight ends into the nfl right so every coach has these positions that when they go to recruit guys they can point and say look at this lineage right and um one of those positions for brian kelly is tight end trade as green looking to be uh i mean look at mason taylor last year but trade as green looking to be the latest in that number and as we mentioned yesterday maybe the biggest uh, uh, like advantage in all of, or the biggest thing to take away from all of this is what uh, Matt mentioned to me on Scone and T on Wednesday. And I'm sure you talk about it on AFR, so I'm not going to sit here long. But it's simply the idea that in Brian Kelly year one, we were not sure um, how he would do recruiting Louisiana. I mean, I don't think I was as concerned uh, as others simply because if you bring in a top five guy, like, you know, they're, they're top five for a reason, right? They're, they're, they're going to be able to get the job done. But... But it was that weird thing where a lot of the top players in the state in 23 were never going to go to LSU, whether it was Manning, Osbury, old boy that was, uh, you know, had committed to Texas and was never wavering. Like, there were kind of these extenuating circumstances where you were never going to be able to win these guys anyway. And so a lot of people are like, I mean, look at all this talent you're letting leave the state. Well, now you look, and we all know that we believe in the build-the-wall philosophy that Nick Saban established in the early 2000s here. And you look now, and... Uh, all the top the top ten players on on three are either um, already committed or heavy heavy crystal ball leans to the Tigers. So you still got to close. You still got to close on all of this. But uh, but it was a big get, and it's it's a sign uh, that LSU can put up those walls around the boot here. Um, all right, boys, get your mind. Get, I'm gonna I'm gonna come to you in a second. So have some ready to go here. I want I want, I want y'all's biggest. Kind of maybe draft um, surprise or takes from last night. Uh, a few things that we haven't mentioned yet. Um, I, I, I think Dalton Kincaid Buffalo's sneaky great, right? Uh, I mean, you give Josh Allen another weapon. Him and Dalton Knox together is going to be really good. You make the quarterback happy, um, which, uh, like, I mean, it, 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 Aaron Rodgers is always in the news, and it's just shocking how Green Bay's continued to draft yeah, maybe even post Rodgers now. But yeah, Dalton Kincaid to Buffalo feels uh, sneaky strong to me there. And then I really like Seattle's pick. I know I made a lot of jokes about Devon Witherspoon on last night's draft show because I didn't know who he was because I'm not a massive draft guy. But after watching stuff, after reading about him, after thinking about teaming up him and Tariq Woolen together, like that's, you know, uh, the Legion of Boom could potentially be back as Woolen was already second only to Sauce Gardner in that rookie of the year uh, for for cornerbacks last year was absolutely fantastic. Um, so I I, I, I I oh and then and then adding Jackson Smith and Jigba. Are you kidding me? Like if you're a Seahawks fan, you should be very happy 
with how last night went. And now you got Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf, and Jigba, Geno Smith. It's 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 okay. Okay, like I was kind of ready to declare Pete Carroll dead a couple of years ago. And we've kind of realized that maybe, you know, Russ was the problem in a lot of ways. And uh, Seattle took advantage of being off, of being able to offload Russ last night to uh, great effect. Now, now Witherspoon has to work out, right? I think Woolen was like a fifth-round pick or something. So he was a diamond in the rough, right? Will, Will, Witherspoon has to live up to this um, uh, to this billing, but if he does, they could be great. All right, boys, what was y'all's biggest takes from last night? I thought I, I my biggest takeaway was just what a good night that was for Houston yeah. in my eyes. I think it's really hard to not be excited as a fan when your organization goes out and just makes a move like that. Like, yeah, you gave up an extra first, two extra thirds, but you get the second best quarterback in the draft, yep. a guy who's very, very promising. You get one of the top five prospects in the draft, maybe the best edge guy in the draft. You saw, I mean, I, I mean, Houston has not been doing great recently. So getting the fans invested like that, I think, is a huge part that a lot of people aren't talking about. I mean, you saw one of the Houston fans last night on the broadcast was crying in the first <laughs> row after they picked Will Anderson. So I just, I think it's hard to look over what a momentum changer that could be for the franchise. I mean, even for me, after that pick, I was like, okay, wait, maybe Houston's in a good spot. Maybe they're turning yeah. stuff around, you know? So it's- Hell yes. Look at Grant. Grant, excellent job. I mean, I throw to you, you never know how these things are going to go. That, I mean, Grant, that was a, a, just an all-star first swing here on OTV. Excellent. Are you, so I don't know your fanhood, Grant. Are you a Texans fan? I am a Saints fan. I'm from Houston, though, so I've watched. Oh, wow. I've, I, I, have been like a secondary fan of the Texans for yeah. a while. I always pull for them in the background, sort of. Uh, no, I actually, it, and it's funny that you say that because I have it written right here in the document, right? Like, I don't know if those picks are going to be work out, but like, gotta be happy if you're a Texans fan. Like, there's just no other way about it. Your 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 team goes; they're aggressive. They get the two hardest to find positions in the NFL. Again, we never know if this thing's going to work out or not, but you've at least you're 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 going for it. Um, which, if you're the Houston Texans, after just all the like mud and crap that you've kind of been dragged through the last few years. I mean, you let Jack Easterby take over the franchise for a while there. A former Patriots team chaplain. You let him completely like incept you and take over the franchise and now maybe you're 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 starting to finally emerge from what has been it feels like a half decade of just bad headline after bad headline. Uh Mr. Cowboys himself how about it, dude? You a little hyped up? You want some um, mozzarella? Hyped up in a good way or a bad way? Um, well, we know that the Cowboys could have done nothing to actually make you happy no, last that, night. That, that's not true. <laughs> um, I was When we were on the broadcast last night, I was explaining <laughs> how they needed a tight end. And, and credit to Buffalo for jumping one pick ahead of them. I truly believe that the Dallas was going to take Dalton Kincaid if he was there. Yeah. I was really like, okay, they're going to grab Michael Mayer now. A big inline blocking tight end. They lost Dalton Schultz, which I hate that they let him go, but you know, you can't pay everybody. I really thought they were gonna look there. And if not, I was okay with defensive tackle. I just kind of think that they reached on Mozzie Smith. I mean, I personally think Brian Brissy is a better player than Mozzie Smith. He was still there. There's a couple of guys out there. Uh Miles Murphy was still on the board when they picked. That's a guy they could have grabbed as well. Um, I was really upset that they didn't take the tight end, but looking at it, and you talked about it a little bit earlier, Darnell Washington, Luke Musgrave, yep, Sam yep, Laporta, yep. Tucker Craft, who if you watched South Dakota State last year like I did, he might be the he might have the best why, hand. Why why did you watch South Dakota State? Because there was <laughs> like nothing. You can't just I, casually I throw out if you watch South Dakota State like I did. Why, why, why? I'm just a big football guy. There were no other football games on that day. <laughs> it was the uh FCS semifinal game. Oh yeah, I watched so, the game. So, yeah, so, yeah, it was a good game when I, they I watched, came back. Yeah, I watched against, the semifinal uh, game. Who was a quarterback that used to be at LSU? Uh uh Lindsey Scott. Oh, yeah, yeah, against Incarnate Word. Yes. Yeah. And uh, then I watched the national championship as well. And Tucker Kraft may have the best hands of any tight ends. I mean, all those guys are still available. You're picking at 58. You got to assume one of them's there. So I don't hate that they went defensive tackle. I just, I think they reached on Mozzie uh, Smith a little bit. All right. All right. Cowboy Nation. Um, we'll see. Uh, I mean, hmm, where do the Cowboys rank right now in the hierarchy? I mean, it's got to pain you that the Eagles are just incredible, right? 
Yeah, and, and we were talking during break. I, I know a lot of people had the character concerns with uh with a Jalen Carter, but their defensive line's already great. Yeah. If he doesn't work out, oh well, who cares? Not a huge loss. Yeah. But if he's great, that gives them another rotational piece. It's I think it was a great pick. Well, and I mean the leadership of the Eagles is excellent. Right. And if you're talking about trying to get the most out of young guys who are going to be adjusting to a lot of like temptations and life changes and just everything that comes with suddenly making, even though, you know, granted, this is something we haven't talked about. These guys are a bit better suited to handle the influx of money and that they're already getting some of that now in college. But um, when you go through such an extreme life change, you know, having a solid core of leaders uh, helps. And I mean, the tone that Jalen Hurts sets in that locker room is, and it's not even getting into guys like Jason Kelsey. Uh, uh, I can't wait though. I bet you, it, it's funny. Carter's so used to dominating. Uh, Jason Kelsey is going to give him a welcome to the league moment, right? Where we're like, oh, he's going to be like, who's this like, not tiny guy, but you know, Kelsey's not nearly well, yeah, overwhelming well, like, like Carter what, six, is. Yeah. One, six, two. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's, probably like, he's probably like 6'2", about 290, 300, yeah. something like that, right? You're kind of prototypical center beast, but he's got them strong hands, Bo. He's got them leverage, and he's got those salty vet techniques. It, it pains me as a Cowboys fan because the Eagles, not only are they good, they have so many likable guys on that team. Yeah, they do. I mean, a I lot know. of just no problem guys. Hurts keeps his mouth shut. He just plays football. Jason Kelsey's awesome. I mean, it well, I mean, it, Hertz it's, is the man. Did to... you see the quote after he, about the, the press conference of the contract where he, what, what he say? He's like, money's nice, championships are better. Yeah, like he just it's, gets just, it it's, it's, it's hard to root against them as a Cowboys fan. Um, Jonathan Plaza says, you have to be happy with Mozzie. Watch the tape. There we go. Um, oh, the T-Bob's knee account is in there. As soon as I raised, y'all are crazy, dude. As soon as I raised my leg, <laughs> an account named T-Bob's knee starts uh, commenting in the chat. Um, Emil says biggest takeaway is that Nolan Smith, Jalen Carter, and Kobe Dean and Jordan Davis are all together. Philly's building a Death Star in the NFC. So there is something wonderfully simple about Roseman's uh, draft strategy, which is like, okay, let's just take all the national champion guys, like the guys that just did the best job, like the Saints do with Ohio State players. Uh, yeah, true, very true. Um, John O'Barnes had a great joke about that the other day. Um, all right, we'll wrap it up for today on the draft talk. Um, I, I mean, I say that it has a gravitational pull. We'll, we'll probably find our way back there at some point. But uh, coming up next, I do want to talk a little bit about the series coming up this weekend here in Baton Rouge, as well as uh, the Lamar Jackson contract, Haley Van Lith. Keep it locked here on OTB. Off the bench with Hester and T Bob. ITI Technical College, ITI College. Edu. Look, I, I, I feel like um, every. A lot of you out there listening right now may be feeling a little lost, okay? You may be feeling a little overwhelmed. You have a job. You want a career. You're worried about long-term security. I get this, okay? These are all very valid thoughts and concerns to have. Let me tell you, the answer, though, is simple. It's ITI Technical College. It's right there off of Airline Highway, okay? It's local. It's family-owned. It's not some for profit national BS, okay? This is a trade school that is going to give you a career. And this is objective. I always reference the Georgetown study, but it's because it matters. In 2022, they did the study where they looked at, and this is all schools, not just trade schools. How much do you pay for school versus what will you be expected to make in your career? Best return on investment in the state, top 15 in the country right here in Baton Rouge, okay? So change your life today Get that career celebrating 50 years at ITI Technical College, itacollege.edu. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further like vans customized for work or play with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales service and finance team and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz vans. The world's leaders in obesity research, obesity medicine, and obesity science are right here. We're doing something that no one's ever done or trying to answer a question that no one's ever asked before. Pennington is a real jewel when it comes to research. 
We are finding the solutions to the world's worst chronic disease, which is obesity. Louisiana needs Pennington Biomedical. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance with the latest in office technology. From desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. Hi, I'm Brandon Landry, founder and CEO of Walker. Hi, my name is Dr. Craig Green. This is Ryan Terrio with HudcoRoofing.com. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. No matter how big your commercial roofing job, Hudco can help. My patients come to me because they trust that I can get the job done at a high level. Ryan Terrio and Richard Tilly have the same level of trust when it comes to roofing. If you have a roofing issue, call Hudco Roofing. Give us a call 364-1007 and we'll come to your house and give you a free inspection. there little buddy what's the matter what's the matter my windows siding and my door that's what's the matter relief windows can fix all of that i got you pop pop what's up oh my gosh look curb appeal that's a good looking neighborhood Friday, lock of the week, lock of the week. Join me, Jimmy Ott and Charles Hanagriff, live from Rafino. Special time, 10 a.m. to noon on Fridays, lock of the week. Game time presented by Bet Rivers from Rafino's on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Yo, what's happening, y'all? Welcome back to OTB. Boys hanging out with you this morning, rolling right along. Got Ribs Huey coming in hour number three. Some champagne shenanigans coming up. Um, uh, all right, let's move on for the draft for a little bit. Uh, obviously, Alabama's coming to the box this weekend. Can't wait. It is Paul Skeen's Day. Congratulations to all of those who celebrate. Um, again, I mean, boys, what do we got? Four weekends left? Four series left in which you get to watch Paul Skeen's just smoothly deliver six innings with double-digit strikeouts and 100-mile-per-hour balls, uh, you know, seven innings in. Like, do not waste these opportunities. Uh, I actually, I'm, I'm going to go up to uh, Monroe and then go to the horse races in Arkansas this weekend. But um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I, I, I you know, I'm going to be with some friends, and uh, one of them's got a family member playing in a uh, little high school baseball playoff. So we're going to go, but I'm going to have my phone on me uh, the entire time watching that game because, again, just do not miss, uh, do, do, don't fail to buy your tickets to the Paul Skeen Show. Uh, look, I Alabama's good. Don't get me wrong. Alabama's a good baseball team. But I'm sick of kind of uh, being so scared of just giving. And, and we haven't done that as much here. But, like, it's funny, like, talking to Hunt, talking to Musso, like the two biggest LSU baseball fans I know, which, as we always talk about with Taylor, is, you know, if, if you're the bigger fan you are of the team, the more you're going to kind of hate them or the more you're going to, like, highlight their foibles because they stress you out. Right, you have so much invested. You love them so much that when you see a weakness, it looks glaring. Whereas you're just a little too close to the case. If you take a little step back, you get more of like a view. You're like, oh, okay. You know what? Um, it's not that bad. Uh, does Alabama enter hot? Absolutely. They're five and one in the last six SEC games. Jay Johnson's pumping them up. I think he might be pumping them up a little too much. This is an LSU team that is number one in the country that hasn't lost two games in a row, that finally for the first time in the season just lost a one-run game 
Uh, this is an LSU team that has been number one since the season started. It has not changed. They have not lost a weekend. It ain't going to start this weekend. Okay? Crimson Tide about to come and get the ass learned this weekend. Uh, I think LSU takes two or three, which is obviously, I mean, at this point, just kind of chalky and easy to say. Uh, but I think there's a good chance LSU makes a statement and will uh, will sweep. Um, so screw Alabama, down with the tide. Uh, like Jay Johnson said, it was actually a huge baseball recruiting weekend when you managed to beat Alabama in football this last season. Uh, and here's to hoping you could beat them in baseball as well. We owe them for men's basketball, okay? We owe them. Uh, they embarrass you. Let's do the same. Even though, I guess, actually, the LSU women's basketball team already did some of that revenge cooking as they just absolutely decimated Alabama. And that's a women's basketball team that would go on to win the national championship, something none of us ever would have expected. They were incredible. We saw the meteoric rise of uh, Angel Reese, who is now an absolute superstar. I mean, I saw her at the spring game and the... Um, Grant, you're not a fantasy nerd, are you? I know you're not, Taylor. Do, do, do you ever read like, read like Wheel of Time or anything? You ever heard of Wheel of Time? I I have heard of it. Okay. I okay. am not. I I have not read it though. So in Wheel of Time, they have some people where they say your Taveran is very strong, right? And basically, what this is is reality kind of warps around you, like 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 the we the uh, the wheel weaves uh, around you, and 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 the fabric of reality kind of changes and. Every now and then, uh, Joe Burrow has this, Tom Brady, like you see Jalen Hurts, like you have these superstars where when they enter a room, your eyes could be closed and you would feel them. Like the hairs on the back of your neck would stand up. Uh, that's where Angel Reese is trending. Like watching her walk around that stadium at the spring game, uh, people were falling over themselves to shout her out, say what's up. Um, and so now you add yet another superstar to this LSU women's basketball team and one of the best players in the entire country when Haley Van Lith from Louisville ends up transferring over, signing to the Tigers. And if you are uh, a female athlete right now, there is not a better place to be than the Bayou. As uh, on three, uh, has they do their um, NIL valuations. Right now, they have four of the top eight Women's NIL valuations in the entire in the entire country for the top eight, and they have the top two. You got Livy Dunn, who's currently at three point five million dollars for her valuation. Just announced yesterday, she's going to be in the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition. You got Angel Reese, who saw her valuation go from I think it was like three hundred k to one point three million during tournament alone. It's now up to one point four million. You got Flaje Johnson, who entered college as already a star. Massive YouTube star, um, rapper, uh, related to Boosie, all these things we know. Well, she's been on, you know, America's Got Talent, all that stuff. Well, she's now fourth in the country at 824,000. And then you bring in Haley Van Lith, 518. And that was before she got here, right? A rising tide rises all ships, rising tide raises all ships, right? Well, Angel Reese and Haley Van Lith about to get each other paid even more and more and more. I am loving all the Shaq Kobe memes uh, that I've seen with Van Lith and Reese making the rounds on Twitter. So, um, and, and and it's weird, man, because this almost becomes like, uh, you know, like Ross said earlier, they're not done yet. It becomes like a snowball rolling downhill. It gains momentum as it goes on. And then the next person wants to join because they're looking at everybody make money. And the next person wants to join. And then it, 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 it takes, it, it becomes self-sustaining at a certain point, a perpetual engine machine. So, or perpetual motion engine, excuse me. Um, so shout out to Coach Kim Mulkey, the legend, continuing to just crash through barriers, make headlines, and uh, creating a super team down here in the boot. Uh, all right, when we get back, let's wrap up hour two, and then we got Rivs Huey coming in for hour three. Keep it locked here on Off the Bench. Off the Bench with Hester and T Bob. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. Follow us on Twitter at 1045ESPN to cast your vote in the Citizens Bank and Trust poll of the day. Vote daily inside Off the Bench. Anytime. Hunt Palmer. And after further review, Citizens Bank and Trust brings you the poll of the day via Twitter at 1045ESPN.
Value Ford has $2,000 off MSRP plus 2.9% APR for 84 months on new 22 Ford Expeditions. And all new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. I drove myself to the ER, had heart surgery, and drove myself home 24 hours later, feeling fine. Starting running again after the procedure, I'm getting excited thinking about it. I had no pain, nothing. I felt great. And right then and there, I was like, oh my God, I'm back. I'm back. It's just amazing. Oshner Health. Long live you. Each year, Guarantee Media hosts a radiothon to benefit Dreams Come True, the local organization that grants dreams to Louisiana kids suffering life-threatening illnesses and their families. We've interviewed these incredible kids and their stories warm our hearts. And none of it would be possible without your help. So we're asking for your support in our effort to making more dreams come true. Each year, our Dreams Come True radiothon is powered by the Baton Rouge Clinic. Visit GuaranteeMedia.com to pledge your support today and thank you. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's that time again. It's heating up. Your boat's getting ready to come out and spend all summer on the water. It's time to take your boat to the next level with Front to Back Boat Service, where if you want an incredible custom speaker install, it's going to blow people away in the water that's there for you. You want an HD sonar where you can see the fish under the water before you cast, feed all your friends. That's there for you at Front to Back Boat Service. So don't put it off. We got the parts in right now. Get them now before they go back on back order. Front to back boat service. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that on Friday's OTB, we'll recap all the NFL draft round one action and look forward to rounds two and three plus get you ready for baseball in the box. LSU, Bama, off the bench, 7 to 10 a.m., 104.5 ESPN. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Yo, what's happening, y'all? Welcome back to OTB. Hey, do want to remind you, NBA playoffs are rolling right along, and you want to go to DraftKings. That's right, the DraftKings Sportsbook app, uh, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Look, if you have not downloaded yet and you want to take advantage um now's the time use the promo code baton rouge when you do and then uh you'll get access to a great deal which is simply placing a five dollar money line bet before you get started it's got to be pregame can't be live bet but five dollar pregame money line bet if it hits you get 150 dollars in bonus bets with which to play so i mean if you're like me and you just like doing tiny bets for fun to keep a little interest in there like you could play with that 150 forever I, I, quite legitimately, that 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 could last you um, a very very long time. So, DraftKings Sports got promo code Baton Rouge. Uh, remember though, it's not just old customers. Right now, everyone gets a no sweat same game parlay every day during the playoffs. So what this is, you craft your same game parlay. If it doesn't hit, you get up to ten dollars back. So hey boys, every day let's just remember to stack. These $10 no sweat same game parlays. Download the app now. Promo code Baton Rouge. Must be 21 or older. Physics present in Louisiana. Select parishes only. Bonus bets expire at seven days after issuance. Opt in required. One bonus bet issued based on amount of initial losing NBA bet. Eligibility wagering deposit restrictions apply. Terms at sportsbook.draftkings.com slash basketball terms. Licensee partner Gold Nugget Lake Charles Gamble. Problem call 1 800 Gambler 1 800 426 2537. Uh huh. Uh, okay, we got ribs coming up next here. Uh, uh, bro, how about Lamar Jackson? How about, I mean, after all of the talk 
after all of, oh, he shouldn't represent himself. He shouldn't do this. He shouldn't do that. He's not worth it. All the weeping and the gnashing of teeth, Lamar wins in the end. More of the final numbers, 185 guaranteed, I believe. To Hertz is 180 guaranteed. Yeah, he got, he, got, he got more guaranteed than Hertz. I think the whole deal was five year, 240. Yep. I think that was the whole and, deal. And so he is now the highest paid per year by about five million as well. Um, look, I, I think when you look, look at how desperate people are for quarterbacks, dude. When you have Lamar Jackson, he has the leverage because you can't let him leave. If you let that guy leave, a former NFL MVP, I don't care. I don't care about any. Don't don't hit me with any of the injury concerns, anything like that. Like, because I don't care. The bottom line is in the reality of what the quarterback market is. When you have a guy who's NFL MVP who has like a forty-six and seventeen record or whatever it is, you just can't let him leave. It's just it's just the name of the game. So Lamar always had all the leverage. He knew that. He tried to tell us that. Here recently, we convinced ourselves that he didn't actually have the leverage, and yet, yeah, he actually does. Um, and then they go to get him receiver last night. Now we'll we'll we'll, we'll see if it works out. Um, the the Baltimore wide receivers has not have uh, first round picks have not worked out uh, traditionally, but uh, Lamar Jackson just a massive, massive win. As for now, he is the highest paid quarterback in the NFL. But but it's um yeah. <laughs> Uh, Corla Jacobs said he still didn't get his fully guaranteed, which was the huge holdout. He didn't get everything he wanted. Uh, he won. Okay. And sure. Did he really want that whole big Deshaun Watson full guarantee? Uh, yeah, but guess what? That's, that's just good negotiation. Right. And that, and that would, it's why I'm so bad at it. I hate conflict. Um, I feel bad for over asking, but like anybody who's actually good at maximizing value and, and and w- w- would tell you to overshoot, right? Ask for the moon. If you miss, you land among the stars. And that's exactly. I mean, I, <laughs> this is very funny. Me, Mac Lindsay says, 185 million guaranteed. Still pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. I'd say he still came out pretty good as Lamar Jackson with one signature on a piece of paper uh, creates generational wealth for him and his family. Hell of a job by Lamar. Even though, again, the. Uh, the other big winner here is Joe Burrow. As it's always the next guy who gets higher numbers, and you still got Herbert creeping around the corner. You got uh you got Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow is going to bankrupt the city of Cincinnati uh when that contract comes through. How funny how funny is it gonna be like the holdout between Herbert and Burrow, like which one of them is going to sign the game of chicken because the next guy is going to get more money. Yeah. That's what I'm looking forward to. Uh, uh, Gulf South says Lamar got paid, but still got less guaranteed than Kyler Murray MVP less than a short guy. What's up with that? LOL. Yeah. I mean, look, um, I think there were a couple of quarterback contracts handed out recent that people would want back, you know, arguably to Sean Watson, um, or at least even if the teams don't want it back, other teams around the league are like, why did you do that? Right. Why did you give to Sean Watson all that? Um, and certainly the, I don't know, man, it's a massive year for Kyler Murray, massive, massive year. Uh, he has to prove that he is actually good every year. We've seen the rhythm where he's awesome at the beginning, um, or at least really good. And then they completely fall apart at the end. Uh, does it directly correlate with the release of call of duty every year? Yes. But you know, I, I think that's a false calls a relationship, right? Like a lot of times he uh it's it's also just that the season goes on, you have injuries, wear and tear, et cetera, et cetera. But um yeah, I'm I'm just not sure on Kyler Murray. But but doesn't that kind of prove the point about negotiating power? Like we don't even know that we think that Kyler Murray is that good, and yet he had all the power over Arizona. Because you spend your number one pick on him. You just can't let him leave. He's done some nice things. Um, just hasn't done them as consistently as you want as uh you have wanted. Um, it looks like chat is getting, uh, very horny already guys. It's not even 9am yet. We've already had the sheriff show up to hand out bonk. So everybody be careful. I don't want anybody getting put in a horny jail this early in the morning. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I, I just, I, I, I don't know. I love that. So many people felt so comfortable calling Lamar Jackson dumb and look at him now. Like who looks dumb now? None of us have 185 million coming our way, guaranteed. Even if we don't do anything else, like 
the man stuck to his guns amidst an avalanche of criticism, and uh, he has been rewarded for it. Uh, all right, coming up next hour, Riff Shuey, Champagne Shenanigans. Um, what do we got on the document thus far for hour three? Oh, did you all see the Nebraska women's volleyball news? Sold out yes. of 82,000. 82,000 people? They're, yeah, they're doing it in the football stadium. They sold out their football stadium for a women's volleyball match. Unbelievable. Riv's got some great topics as well. Um, so we'll get it all uh, coming up next hour right here on OTB. Uh, Emil says, I find it very hard to believe that Burrow is going to go on the cheap for Cincy. No way. What about Joe Burrow's vibe has ever told you he would take a discount? He ain't going to. Uh, hey, I do want to remind you to go to rejuvemedical.com, restore me, refuel me, rejuva me. For all your, uh, you want to feel younger, you want to feel better, stronger, how you used to recapture that youthful confidence that you used to walk around with, that invulnerability. Well, rejuve me can help you accomplish that. Uh, go check out the Rejuvi Medical YouTube channel if you want to kind of start to explore some things, get some answers. What is HRT? What is uh, semaglutide metabolization optimization? Um, and you'll start to get an idea of the vibe. This is fun, man. This is good. We're talking about feeling better. So why don't you go in, get that free consultation, get your labs drawn, okay? Learn where your body is deficient, where it's strong, what it needs, and then let them customize that plan for you. Uh, look, they got locations at Baton Rouge, Metairie, Slidell, and now Shreveport as well. Rejuve me medical, restore me, refuel me, rejuve me. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram has $15,000 off all new 2022 1500 SCA trucks. And all new Bayou automotive vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. If you need sales or service, the crew at Bayou is going to do right by you. Turn my music high, 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 yeah. You don't know what you're doing. Sure I do. I'm from the streets where the hood can swallow on me. Bullets will follow on me. There's so much that you can run the slalom. The cops comb this top to bottom. They say that we are prone to violence. But it's home sweet home. With personalities clash and chrome meets chrome. Prices up and down like this war. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's that time again. It's heating up. Your boat's getting ready to come out and spend all summer on the water. It's time to take your boat to the next level with front-to-back boat service, where if you want an incredible custom speaker install, it's going to blow people away in the water that's there for you. You want an HD sonar where you can see the fish under the water before you cast, beat all your friends, that's there for you at front-to-back boat service. So don't put it off. We got the parts in right now. Get them now before they go back on back order. Front to back boat service. Hey there, little buddy. What's the matter? What's the matter? My windows, siding, and my door. That's what's the matter. Relief windows can fix all that. I got you. Pop, pop. What's up? Oh my gosh, look. Curb appeal. That's a good looking neighborhood. ReliefWindows.com. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Follow us on Twitter at 1045ESPN to cast your vote in the Citizens Bank and Trust poll of the day. Vote daily inside Off the Bench, anytime. Hunt Palmer. And after further review, Citizens Bank and Trust brings you the poll of the day via Twitter at 1045ESPN.
Where do we go? All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Jacob Hester and T-Bob Hebert. Yeah, 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 yeah. Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Hey, they said I got to come off the bench. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, what's happening, y'all? Welcome in. Hour number three of OTB. And I got Rivs Hugh E. in studio with me today. As we do every hour. It's not, you know, it's not. Every so. hour. It's at, we're every, every week. Every week, final hour of Friday. Look, I'm just happy because I feel like my race has been run at this point, okay? <laughs> I was feeling very hungover this morning, a little intimidated. I was very intimidated last night when oh. I, it was almost like a version of the Sunday Scaries where it's like, Oh yeah. I'm just having the best time. There's so much positive energy in Don Juan. Shout but out Rouse. You Rouses know you're going to have to get up. Well, the problem was all of a sudden I look at my watch. It's 11.15. And I'm like, oh, I'm still here. <laughs> oh no! Dude. Yeah, you texted me. <laughs> okay, I would like to. I would like to talk about something. Yeah. You texted me. Let's go yeah. at 11:14 p.m. Yeah. Well, because you because I asked if you were in for tomorrow. And then at 9:30 a.m., I yeah. said yes, and you yes. okay. Yeah. So I wasn't even sure if that was in response to that. Yeah, that's so then, what it was. I had just seen it. But he said Mets go. Yeah. And I was like, big Mets guy, huh? Yeah, and that's not funny. It's like a lazy. Said that's the laziest response he's ever gotten. I don't know. I woke up and that was the first thing I saw. Well, no, 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 no. But but I want to be clear here. It's not a critique. I think it's very kind. I think you were like, okay, I should respond to him, even though I said nothing. Like I said, nothing that actually warranted a response or needed a response. You're being kind. Like okay, I, sh- oh, okay. I should say something I'll back. Respond. I got a text. So so no, no. I'm I'm, I'm thankful for it. But it's just um, yeah. I mean yeah. You know, just uh, it was kind of just a. Uh, generic ass uh i'm okay I, I need to respond so here you go but think about this timing so i texted let's go to 11 17 because the scaries were kicking in uh, at 11 15 like, i'm let's like go. You're gonna i be have there. a show to do tomorrow <laughs> jake is out i know i'll have for the first hour i ideally need and you know ross came through for us an hour too like i ideally need uh some juice here to help pull me along yeah and so i got very excited excited missed your response uh, uh-huh. earlier in the day so i got very excited when i saw that you yeah. were in i'm in uh hell yeah you are uh you were also in houston last week i was the taylor swift concert despite claiming not to be a very big taylor swift fan and yet i don't know there's a video of you singing along that makes you look like quite this swifty but you had a hell of a fit on yeah look i'm uh, not gonna okay yeah. so look I am not a Taylor Swift fan. Noted. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that I think there's a segment on like uh, the post show show somewhere out in the ether, wherever those exist now, where like I hopefully am, nowhere, <laughs> where I am violently like defending the fact that I don't like her. Yes, I remember that. Um, cause she just annoys me. But like, <laughs> I, but how about this? I am able to be annoyed by her and also recognize that she is a talented performer. Okay. I can do both. I think both can can exist together, right? They can coexist. Yeah, for sure. Coexist and truth. So my friends got tickets to this show. Mm -hmm. They had one extra ticket. It wasn't, you know, whatever. Uh Some women. They had an extra ticket. They texted me. And while I am not a Taylor Swift fan, I'm a good times fan. Yeah, hell yeah. I'm here for the vibes. I'm always here for the vibes. So what it meant was we got to go to Houston without our children. We got to go eat a fun brunch. We got to dress up. We got to, like, pick out outfits for the concert. We got to go together. No kids, right? Like... it's Well, it's kind of like Saturday. I'm um, I'm going to horse races in Arkansas, and the weather forecast is awful. Supposed to be storming. Potentially... I mean, they'll run in the rain, but potentially storms so bad. I don't even know if they're going to run. And uh, one of the people going was kind of trying to poo-poo the whole thing. Uh, and I was like, are you kidding me? I'm going to be at a place where I can gamble and I'm not going to have kids for all of Saturday. Like, right. there is nothing that you could say that could get me down. Like, right. ideally, would, would the horses, would the ponies run and be better? Absolutely. Sure. But I'm going to have a day with, you know, a couple other couples and nobody's bringing their kids. And so, yeah, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Even though it is interesting. This is probably the only room in the entire country with two people that went to, like two, that went to a Taylor Swift fan concert, yes, both kind of hate Taylor Swift. Well, it's Because a, Ta- Taylor same, also was yes, at a contract, yes. and he also came in here. It's like, I'm not really Taylor. And, and this is on the heels of the drama of everybody freaking out because nobody can get tickets. And here you two go, I mean, snatching just act, up I the just Swifty tickets. Like the ticket. yeah. But here's the thing. I recognize she's a good performer, and I don't know what Taylor's experience was at the concert, but it was. I mean, like, my notes are this. It was 
we did, we missed all the opening stuff. We meant to. Like I was, we weren't here for the openers. We got there um, about we got into our seats about five minutes before Taylor started. So and she started around eight. She played for like three and a half hours. Damn, that's some good conditioning. As a non-Taylor Swift fan, it's a lot of Swift. I could have used a little less. <laughs> Taylor Swift. Um, I like I, I appreciated her playing all the hits. She played all the hits. I don't know if you know how the the um show ran, but her whole thing, it's the Eras tour. So what she's doing is she is playing songs from every single one of her eras. It's crazy she can be that young and have yes. eras, but so she does. She, yeah, she does. And so and then it ends with her newest album. And so like she plays the most songs off of her newest album because technically this is the tour for that, yeah. you know? Um and so it was really whoa. It was really cool. Um, but I could have used a, a few less of, like, the deep cuts, you know? Because, like, mm. I don't know what we're doing yeah. here. Um, but it was it was really... Let shake it off. I'm good to go. It was very, like, fantastical. The production was great. Her backup dancers, like, I would have gone just to watch her backup dancers. They were incredible. The the outfits, everyone's outfits. Look like, at, at the concert. fit from our girl, Ribs. If you're watching on YouTube, I got them. So it's 104.5 ESPN. <laughs> I, the pants or whatever. Go back up. Go back up. <laughs> Yeah, uh, is is it? It's kind of like it's Native sequined. American yeah. chic, like it's Western wear. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yes, I guess. Yes, yes. I don't it know. is a it is a um, <laughs> loud, loud Western wear coat for our girls, and uh, like loud for the group. This was not like an yeah. everybody dress loud situation. Uh, you Look, went for it. I think you pulled it off. Which, I am to be always, fair, I think you pulled it off. I am dude. always going to commit to a theme. It doesn't matter if I'm the only one committed to it. I'm going to commit. True. But what I will tell you is that I was not dressed very wild considering, I mean, Taylor saw what everyone else was wearing at this well, I'm, place. I'm guessing at the Eras tour, they're wearing a bunch of crazy Taylor fits. There was just, like yes, back in all the, day. the Eras. So yeah. everyone they, was, they had a lot of like the yes. the cheerleader theme, which okay. I didn't know was one personally. I wore That's jeans. That's probably like early. I wore jeans and a blue plaid button down. Yes. Okay, that, so was, that was my Taylor stick, Swift You were sticking <laughs> out like a sore thumb, I'm sure. Because everybody else yeah. had on sequins. I was also the guy like sitting in his chair, like checking scores during yep. the concert. So yep. like that, that was me. I took a lot uh, of extended bathroom breaks. Oh, listen to this. Uh, got a mixed drink. I was like, I can't, I can't be drinking these seltzers. It's gonna make me sick. Like they had, they had like frozen drinks. I was like, that feels like a hangover. So I went and got a mixed drink. Yeah. How much do you think I paid for it? Oh, I can tell Ooh. you right now. Wait, oh, wait, 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 no, wait, 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 Thirty-five. What? Okay, yeah, I was gonna guess about eighteen. And I got, I got, I got Brand a beer. Shot back in his I got seat. a beer like this big, and it was like. 11 or 12, so... I mean, that's to be expected. <laughs> Is 35? it? 35? Not 35. No, 11 or 12 oh, for yeah, beer. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I yeah, get yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that yeah. sucks. Yes. But I'm at a concert where right, I get right, it. Right, right, right. 35 for... A, was it a double? Yes, it was okay, a double. Okay, okay, okay. To be okay, fair, okay, I had, okay. To be fair... It's still crazy, but a double does explain but it a bit more. But if you think about it this way, I got two doubles at that show. I was there for three and a half hours. Yeah. Like. They were good drinks. It wasn't like they were like it wasn't like they were skimping on the booze, you know. But yeah. still, it was jarring when she gave me my total. I was no. like, oh, <laughs> okay, go on, go, yeah. what? Oh. Come again? Huh? Um, but it was cool. Let's like, I mean, back. she was gr she's a great performer. Um, <laughs> there were still things she did that I was like, yeah, this is why I don't like her. Um, she does the thing like you know, like she came out at first and everyone's cheering, right? Yeah, and she does this thing where she's like. <sighs> Oh, yeah. for, me? Okay, let me, God, for me, dude, God forbid, God forbid she be. <laughs> yes, Taylor, all of us in NRG right now are cheering for you. No, obviously. let me ask you this. In my <laughs> opinion, I think Taylor Swift is really cringy. Like just I, that, I think she like, that like a, kind of stuff is cringy. The special effects at the concert were great. I thought Some of it was a little cringy. I thought her stage presence was kind of awkward. It in, was. In my opinion. Hmm. I think overall, That's I was impressed. Hate no, hate overall, hate, 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 I still yeah, was no, impressed. Overall, was no, no, Look, that know. concert was not for me. I yeah, was yeah, not fair. the target audience. I, I can appreciate that it was an overall good show. Yes. Uh, it was... Uh, she was great. Like, the whoever... Whoever put together this show, it was great. There were some cringy moments. I guess my point is, is if I'm Taylor Swift, I'm walking out on that stage and everyone's cheering for me. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, y'all are. Yeah, you're here for me. She was more of like... the. But that's never and been her past, vibe with we're her past fans, that, though, Taylor. right? We're past never, that. I, I, look, I'm not one to comment on this, and we get, we'll move on in a minute here. But has, has, that's never kind of been her vibe with her fans. Hasn't she always tried to be like the 
relatable, it feels, like, it feels high school not, girl. It feels disingenuous. Like, we, we, it's, we get it. You know that we're here for you. <laughs> like, yes, obviously, all one billion of us are here for you. Mm, yeah, I don't mind it. Uh, okay. Well, it was. I was impressed with the show. We had a good time. Um, I think you shouldn't my, have. I think my favorite part of the show, which is such a, maybe a lame thing to love, you get these bracelets. And I think she's done this at other shows. Oh, uh, yeah, they light up. And the they crowd. light up. Like, but everyone has a different bracelet. Like, they're not all the same. Yeah. So they're, and they go to the beat of certain songs. So they're like, the oh, whole, that's gotta be a cool all of visual. NRG, like, everyone has one on. You're seeing, like, the light yeah. patterns oh, all that's over really the badass. stadium. So that was really cool. I mean, that makes sense. And it's funny you'll talk about special effects. I mean, in a day and age where I feel like artists are more and more reliant on concerts to make money. Uh, it would make sense that you start no, they're to relying come up with on new mixed like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, NRG is for NRG. sure. Um, <laughs> so it was good. Um, I I'm mean, glad look, I went. I'm not. I'm not like upset that I went or anything. Any, any. Uh, I was. You know what? I was also very impressed with. We left the concert and then we rode. We stayed downtown. We rode the light rail back downtown. It was so efficient. Wait, you got on the really? little train thing? Yes. I hated that thing. Why? It was because efficient. I, drove, I love good no, public transit. It was incredible. Three dollars. What they did was they put it in between the parking lot and the main roads. So everybody's trying to get out of the parking lot and they're stopped because the damn trains coming hey, through. Oh, maybe you should forever. care about the environment more and take the train, dude. So we Ubered there and we took the train back. It was three dollars. Sounds awesome. It took us like thirty minutes maybe to get back, but like. God. It's nothing. That's it's the greatest. Does that make you so happy? <laughs> it's the greatest failure in America that we don't have um, like like a European train systems. So we don't got to drive. Like like stop talking about it, politicians. Somebody freaking build the railway to New Orleans and Baton Rouge. <laughs> Just do it. Make it happen. Do you know how nice it would be if you could not drive and ride that over? That was incredible. Go to the game, ride back. It'd be incredible, dude. Um, last thing I'll say, uh, and then we can move on from Taylor Swift. But I felt like there was like, um, there were very few demographics people, but the biggest one I'd say were like preteen girls, yeah, right? Makes sense. Um, we had like a row of preteen girls behind us and, you know, they're just like, they knew every lyric, which I get it. There were artists like that for me when I was, you know, little, but they're like, they're singing every lyric and they're feeling everything so deeply. Yeah. And so a couple things, like there's like one song that Taylor Swift sings about like how she's a cardigan that someone has thrown under a bed, you know, and forgotten. And these girls are back there and I want to be like, you've never been anyone's cardigan. Like, what are we doing? You don't understand this, but they're feeling it so deeply. But then yeah. the latest Taylor Swift songs are a little edgier. Okay. She has like a little more like explicit language in the songs, which is fine. And I was like, oh, are these girls? What's going to happen with these girls back here? They didn't skip a beat. No, They're singing no, through it. Yeah, I was like, yeah. language, man. Uh, so there's nothing better than cursing as a preteen. They're just so in it. I, yeah. I love it for them. I loved the experience for them because they were my, just my, so My least favorite it. part was the people next to me. I, I thought oh. the fans were ridiculous. There's a 20 to 25-year-old girl Taylor two seats everything. over from me bawling, crying <laughs> when Taylor Swift walks out on stage. Yeah, bro. Oh, that's too much. You're that's a grown much. woman. She, all she did was walk out on the I stage. Would, I, I, cried, I cried at John Williams' concert, so I'm not, you know, yeah, well, I can't even, I can't even throw true. a shot. Well, that, that's, um, that was my Taylor Swift experience. It was fun. If you are even, like, a general fan of just, like, concerts and, like, a good time, I mean, it was fun. Grant, what are you, what are you watching on your phone back there? Because you had a very odd timing where when Rivers mentioned preteen girls, you started <laughs> fist pumping. <laughs> I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Gee, what is what? What is happening? What are you uh, What are you watching on your phone? Is something a fantasy? Is it a bet? What's going on here? Formula One. Oh, that's not where I thought okay. it was going to go. Okay, and I okay. just had it on in the background. It was completely unrelated. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's like, oh. <laughs> like what? Although there was a point with the with the Taylor Swift crying twenty five year old girl where I was going to say. If Joe Burrow had gotten drafted by the Saints, I would have cried. Yeah, like, yeah, I yeah. 100%. Like, I guess no, it's all relative. It's, it's all true. relative. We all have the things we cry at. You yeah. Know? No, for sure. For sure. That's um, funny. All right. When we get back, more OTB. Keep it locked. OTB. OT. Uh, hey, I want to remind you to call up my guy, Thomas Email. Thomas and Megan Email. Uh, 225-206-1517. 225-206-1517. One seven. That is Riverlands Insurance, and uh, they can save you money. And I don't care what type of insurance it is, um, uh, anything, anything. Okay, uh, you need home, auto, business. Uh, think about your home insurance. It's rolled into your mortgage a lot of times. 
So you probably don't actually realize what you're playing. Like you could be way overpaying, not even getting the coverage you deserve. How about you get all of these answers without lifting a finger? 225-206-1517. We are constantly getting testimonies from people who have hundreds to thousands of dollars saved per year. Join that number by calling up Tom's email today, 225-206-1517. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales service and finance team and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance with the latest in office technology. From desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. For over a century, local broadcasting has evolved with the needs of the community. We move past the stigmas of opinion journalism and bring the most relevant news online, on air, and on the go. You have trusted us with your news, sports, weather, and entertainment. Trust us to keep moving with you. Text TB to 52886 and tell Congress local broadcasting is here to stay. Hi, I'm Brandon Landry, founder and CEO of Walker. Hi, my name is Dr. Craig Green. This is Ryan Terrio with HudcoRoofing.com. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. No matter how big your commercial roofing job, Hudco can help. My patients come to me because they trust that I can get the job done at a high level. Ryan Terrio and Richard Tilly have the same level of trust when it comes to roofing. If you have a roofing issue, call Hudco Roofing. Give us a call 364-1007 and we'll come to your house and give you a free inspection. Hanniger joins us for the Friday edition of Handy Time. We started with Jimmy Ott's game time at 10 a.m. from Rafino's. Scott Rabelais is with us, and we'll be taking a look at the first round of the NFL draft. Handy Time, noon weekdays, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. OTB, OT, with Hester and T-Bob on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge and 94.7 ESPN Alexandria. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to OTB. Um, hey, do to remind you, Dreams Country Radiothon continues to roll right along. Shout out 104.5 ESPN and uh, the Baton Rouge Clinic for putting it on. Um, donations uh, to enter the raffle are open through Sunday. Uh, you go to 1045ESPN.com. Every $5 gets you a raffle entry, a ton of great prizes that are going to be given away on Monday. But remember, Dreams Come True is a Louisiana organization that helps grant dreams of children and their families who, um, you know, the children are dealing with life-threatening illnesses. It's an incredible cause. I love working with them, have for years. 
please get involved. Please give. Thank you to the Baton Rouge Clinic. Thank you to all of the presenting sponsors here over the past couple of weeks. And uh, 1045ESPN.com is where you can give them Louisiana families. All the money stays right here and save about $3,500 to fund a dream. So give uh, whatever you can. Um, all right, Rivs, you pointed this out, and I think you're right. Uh, we make a lot of serial killer jokes in this show. Um, we know that Mario, without a doubt, uh, has has taken the life of another human being at some point. Um, I did not know that we may have a second Dexter lurking among <laughs> There's us. There's a second shooter. <laughs> yes, yes, there was on the grassy knoll. <laughs> well, okay, I don't know. This isn't a super surprise to me because, I mean, anytime there is any, like, anytime you go to, like, Senior Bowl or... I'd be like SEC media days, or there's any time where like you need to be organized talking about players. Jake comes in with like 18 colored pens, yep, laminated. She, he he has um he has a laminating machine yep. at home. He loves to laminate things. Yep. And look, who amongst us? It's very satisfying to laminate things. I don't think I've ever done it, but I've never gotten something laminated and been like, I'm mad at this. Like. Yeah. Lamination's great, especially if you're trying to be organized. Yes, yes. So we've said laminated so many times now that it feels like a fake does word. Does it feel like a real word? No, not at all anymore. Lamination. So he was getting ready for the draft, right? So he's like doing all he's like writing his sheets, players, like some um, like for example, the one that we're gonna pull up, Quentin Johnson, like his height, weight, uh, you yeah, know, hold grade. This like, has some notes if he needs to talk about him. The whole deal, right? Okay. So, he, he posts this picture. So, Matt Flynn wow. responds, why are you using orange notebook paper? I know okay. there's a great reason behind there's, it. That's a good question. He responds, and he gives all the colors. Blue is running back. Orange is wide receiver. Hell yeah. Yellow tied in. Pink, QB. Eyes go straight to a certain color to react to the pick quickly. Got it? Love that. I respond. Genius. But isn't that why you have tabs on the side? He um, also has the tabs. Um, if you're just trying to get somewhere quickly, isn't that what the tabs for? So, so I'm gonna okay, I'm, okay. I'm, no, but look, it's fine. I'm gonna come to Jake's defense here in this regard uh, because yes, it is what the tabs are for, but there is something very visually pleasing yes. about everything being so sure. distinctly organized. Um, are we getting into some serial killer category potentially? I, there's a, a lot of stuff happening. Well, okay. Look, a successful killer has to, you know. Yeah, you have to have a system. And you got to have everything in place. Right. Yes, you, you can't leave No anything. room for mistakes. Yes, exactly. exactly. Okay, so I said, isn't that why you have the tabs on the side? Mostly joking. You know, I'm just like a little ribbon. You know, I'm just trying to like, I can tell Flynn's kind of getting to him. He comes back with all this very, like very specific information about the colors. I'm like, okay, he's starting to get a little defensive. So I decided I was going to do that thing that we do to each Jab other. Jab him. Um, where you're Smell not a little blood in the water, where, go ahead and start jabbing. Where you're not being defensive, but I start going, Why are you being defensive? Oh, God, it's such a good technique. Mm -hmm. It's, um, I've fallen for it so many times when somebody tells mm -hmm. when I'm not mad and somebody tells why me, Why are you why mad? Are you mad? Right Ooh, and Ooh. then I get actual mad self fulfilling prophecy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I said, Why is isn't that why you have tabs so on the insidious. side? He responds, and this is where I know that I'm, I'm starting to get to him because he responds in a paragraph. <laughs> um, he says, and Jake doesn't respond to a lot of things I do on the internet. So, like, I was like, wow, he's not happy with me right now. Uh, that's why they're the same color as the tabs. There's no confusion on what you're looking for. Yep. If you lose your thought process, you know exactly what position you're talking about. All true. The draft coverage moves fast. It's wow. my draft system, and it has always worked for me. Hell yes, um, dude. Well, for, I have a couple. Well, I and, I and then I did the ultimate. I knew this was going to be the nail in the coffin. Just trolling my man. I said, online, you know what? Just take a deep breath. We all no. love your system. Oh, my God. I'm, and Flynn was like, great job I'm, making I'm, it mad, I'm, Rivers. I'm getting angry. <laughs> I'm getting angry, and, like, I, it's not even me. Like, I'm angry at you. Hey, and it's okay. I'm, oh, my God. Your system is God, so good. Dude, uh, uh, anyways, I was just Take joking. Jake, breath. if you're listening. Take a deep breath. How about how about you go jump in? Why don't you go stay in Houston? <laughs> Never come back. If you're listening, Jake, which you're probably not, but if you are, I was just kidding. I love your system. I really do. That's not that's not me being condescending. Uh, but I do have something to say. He says the draft coverage moves fast. The draft coverage actually moves just the slowest. <laughs> okay, just no, the actual no. slowest. No, no, no. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> like, okay, if, we're okay, being, okay. if we're being real. So I'll say this. I'll say this. Yes, the draft <laughs> in and real. of itself be, can feel slow, but... This isn't Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Like, but, life's not moving too fast for you, my guy. But in Jake's defense, you know, we plan a show. We know this segment here, this segment here, this segment yeah. here. When 
Witherspoon goes, uh, when Devon Witherspoon gets picked fifth overall and nobody's expecting it, you got to be able to find that info right away. Uh So maybe Uh couching Uh it as fast isn't right. It's more, you got to be malleable. You got to be on your toes. You got to be on your toes. Look, the only thing that I have to say about this is, my God, I know this, but every time, put up the picture again. I am just struck by the quality of Jake Hester's handwriting. Well, and he wrote a lot of stuff. So I mean, how long do you think this un- took? Be- I, my hand is cramping see, just simply looking at it. Um, all, all caps. He writes in all caps. You know what I find? If I'm trying to do handwriting, I go all caps. Okay. I'll make a bigger capital letter for an actual cap. But uh-huh. then uh, something about all caps just gives it's it a very real pleasing to look chunky, at. pleasing feel. Uh, that, I mean. Can you imagine Jake God. at like Hobby Lobby trying to find orange paper? Yeah, I actually can. <laughs> Uh, because he's obsessed with this system. Yeah, 100%. No, also, I think it's a great system. I went, into, I went into Hobby Lobby the other day, it's, and it's dope. It's awesome. Yeah, I Hobby know. Lobby's cool. I, I, it's, the idea of Hobby Lobby stresses me out because there's so much stuff in there. Like, whatever you're into, Hobby Lobby's got it. Yeah. It's a lot of hobbies, you know? But uh, every time I go, I'm like, oh, I need this thing. Or, oh, I never thought that this is where I would come to get this thing. Yeah, 100%. Like, they have every kind of hobby that you would possibly need. But uh, shout out, Jake. That's incredible. Like, I'm just kidding. I think the fact that he's that, like, <laughs> that he's that ready for any possible thing to happen is incredible. And I, I'm just not like that. <laughs> so I think it's probably me, like, you know, projecting a little. Uh, but, uh, yeah, my hand. Yeah, yes. Oh, without a <laughs> doubt. I mean, without a doubt, that is in play. <laughs> Because you're feeling inherently threatened by yeah. the amount of organization <laughs> like, that he's oh bringing God. to the table. And then, like, you realize his success in the NFL and everything else yeah, was, like, like, because of that why? organization. Yeah, no, I feel that 100%. Although, somebody made a good point. Jake is, like, angrily, like, organizing his binder as we speak. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, do you want to remind you to Page Plus Surgery or PagePlusUC.com? Okay, you're going to see the difference. When you go to Page Plus, you get in, you get better. Uh, they're throughout the city now. The, the locations... Um, uh, again, the actual facilities themselves, the first time I went to Page Plus, like that is what blew me away. Uh, and that's before I even knew about the digital profile where after you sign up the first time, you just press a button on your phone. It's so easy. You get in and get out. Um, obviously, they have the best doctors, nurses, nurse practitioners in there to uh, to help you out. But look, man, you know, during this time of year, you got any colds, anything like that, um, it's right there for you. You need any sort of testing. And again, if, on the occupational medicine front, if you're a business and you need Ahmed, well, the Mid City location of Patient Plus is uh, it's just unparalleled. It's so much better than what you're used to dealing with. PatientPlusUC.com. Uh, look, champagne makes you burp. Okay, I, I don't know. I, <laughs> I, like, I don't. I don't going know. Going through what, it over there. I don't know what else to tell you. Champagne makes you burp. It's not a big deal. Um, we have not gotten to the Sean Payton bong video yet. We were all laughing about bong. it very last night. It's very funny. No, bong Oh. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we, we will play that. Um, I like this. You sent this the other day, Rivs. Oh. Um, from, uh, is it Wes Anderson? No, it is oh. something. No, but what, I, I know you're loving the <laughs> random Gen Z Wes Anderson Some revolution that's going on right now. Some of those things are so good. It's so pleasing to me. Um, there's a little league oh, in yeah. Deptford Township, New Jersey. How about this, boys? It's a good rule here where if you're a parent and you yell at the officials to an excessive degree during the baseball games, you have to ump three games <laughs> yourself before you're allowed to return to the stands. Love okay? that rule. Absolutely. Jake dude. even was like, we might implement that in some ways, you know, like, uh, yeah, for <laughs> like, sure, dude. Um, that makes all the sense in the world. Like, Okay, okay, you want to talk that noise? Yeah, yeah. When I'm like uh, like a high school kid out here just, you know, trying to do this for the love of the game, make a couple bucks on the side. Like, the game doesn't need, like, we treat our refs so badly and none of it exists without them. And then we're like, why can't we get anybody to referee anymore? Uh, hello, because everybody's a-holes to them. Uh, I love this idea. And if you're a parent... There are dads fighting at t-ball games, you know? Like, what are we doing? If you're a parent who yells at your child's Little League game, hey, tighten up, okay, bro? Tighten the hell up. It's ridiculous. There's no excuse for it. It's it's such a bad look. You look like a child. Okay, so lock it in, tighten up, and I love this idea of making them have to officiate I mean, in order to show some respect. Don't yell at the ump, you know, like yell at your kid like a normal person. Yeah, yeah. No. Put like an incredible amount of pressure on those eight year olds. Yeah, you know? Yeah, what are yeah, we doing? Exactly. How about this? Just <laughs> chill. Right? I mean, just like sit back and cheer for when your team does good. Hell, cheer for when the other team does good. Because none of it matters. Uh, I mean, I'm not, you know, you want to be competitive oh, man, and everything. I feel like you are about to come for I mean, you. like, I get, like, none of it really matters, though, uh, to be honest. Uh, none of that age, at least. 
Uh, Dana Bash says Moonrise, Moon, Moonrise Kingdom is my go-to Wes I Anderson. I do love Moonrise Kingdom. So if you don't know what we're talking about, if you go on like TikTok or even Instagram now that because of Reels, um, people are doing this trend where they start with a photo of themselves and it's like, don't pretend you're in a Wes Anderson film doing whatever <laughs> it, activity they're doing. And then the rest of the reel looks like a Wes Anderson film. Some of them are meh, uh, but some of them are so, so good. Yeah. Like the quality, like the, the time people have put into these. Well, he's got such a distinct style mm-hmm. to it, right? Anytime you have that, you can be replicated. Yeah. Uh, I think... I think my go-to Wes Anderson, if I'm just being uh, like, which one I've seen the most, mm-hmm. is uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox. Mine is Royal Tenenbaums. Mm. I've never seen Royal Tenenbaums. It's good. Uh, I want to. Um, love uh, Grand Budapest. But they're all good. I mean, yeah. Grand, Rushmore's uh, Rushmore. Great. I mean, classic. Rushmore, classic. Life Aquatic. There's a new one coming classic. out. There's a lot of people in it. That's the cool yeah. thing about his movies is there's so many people yeah. in them. Always. So it's kind of like you come for just like the, the actors. I saw the French Dispatch. Oh, he's really good. Check it out. Mm-hmm. All right, when we get back, more OTB. Keep it locked. OTB. OT. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. At Corval Toyota in Opelousas, you can get 3.99% financing on select 2023 models. And we also have a large selection of pre-owned inventory. So come on down to Happy Town. That's Corvell Toyota in Opelousas, Happy Town, USA. Hey, it's Matt Musso. Join me Monday through Friday for your daily update on LSU Baseball with Musso at the Box, presented by New Orleans Flooring. Wherever you get your podcast, Apple, Spotify, Google, and check out New Orleans Flooring. Two locations, Metairie and Prairieville or nolaflooring.com. Each year, Guarantee Media hosts a radiothon to benefit Dreams Come True, the local organization that grants dreams to Louisiana kids suffering life-threatening illnesses and their families. We've interviewed these incredible kids, and their stories warm our hearts. And none of it would be possible without your help. So we're asking for your support in our effort to making more dreams come true. Each year, our Dreams Come True radiothon is powered by the Baton Rouge Clinic. Visit GuaranteeMedia.com to pledge your support today, and thank you. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, Our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance with the latest in office technology. From desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. Hi, I'm Brandon Landry, founder and CEO of Walker. Hi, my name is Dr. Craig Green. This is Ryan Terrio with HudcoRoofing.com. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. No matter how big your commercial roofing job, Hudco can help. My patients come to me because they trust that I can get the job done at a high level. Ryan Terrio and Richard Tilly have the same level of trust when it comes to roofing. If you have a roofing issue, call Hudco Roofing. Give us a call 364-1007 and we'll come to your house and give you a free inspection.
Hey, it's Hunt. Join me for a Friday edition of the Hunt Palmer Show presented by Cork's Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. Full reaction to the draft and really locking in on LSU and Alabama from the box. Hunt Palmer Show on Friday presented by Cork's. One to three weekdays, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. OTB, OT, with Hester and T-Bob on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge and 94.7 ESPN Alexandria. God, my shoes smell so bad, dude. I haven't worn these <laughs> shoes in months, and like all I can do is smell them. Can you smell them? I can't them? smell them. Okay, thank God. I'm so self tell you. over here. It smells so awful. What I, shoes? Uh, just the, the little, like, I don't know. I bought these sometime. Ooh, I legs. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, a little creamy thighs, a little porcelain thigh. Um, so, funny story, I guess... I don't know if it was like Tuesday. I don't know when it, what day it was. T Bob sends a message to me and Jake. Yeah, it's a photo of just his short shorts and his thighs yeah. and his tall socks. I and had on like Keith Van Horn socks up to my knees, and I and I thought it looked cool, but I wasn't sure, and so I was trying to get some positive reinforcement. From so the he friends. sends, and he's like, "Am I on to something here?" Well, he just sent it at like the worst possible moment. Mm-hmm. So like I was mm-hmm. in the middle of a bunch of stuff mm-hmm. going down. I don't know where, J- I think Jake was flying. No, Jake literally. Jake's like in the airport. His luggage was lost and he was on like a five hour delay <laughs> I was having sort of like a meltdown for like other reasons. Like there was just a lot happening right when T-Bob sent that message. No so response. no one responded. No, no, no. Um, and then like, but my favorite thing was I had honestly forgotten that it happened. And hours later, I'm like sitting in the carpool line and I get a text message from T-Bob and it's just like, F you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> I'm going yeah. with it. And I was, I... Well, you know what's sad? Truly, is I laughed. I was, like, sitting there, and I read it, and I started laughing. Because, like, I mean, you know, it was what it was. You I don't am, respond to us I was, all so, the time. So, so, to be clear, to be clear, I know, I know. And so, I'm. it's glass houses. I am not one to cast, um, you know, not one to throw stones in this regard. I'm the worst at responding in a timely manner, especially. Um, I mean, he was expecting like an hour or something. But but do know that y'all made me insecure enough oh. where I put my socks down. <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't bring myself to do it. It was too absurd of a look where uh, I, I put my socks fine. back to down. Be, to be clear, I mm-hmm. thought you looked cool. Like you looked fine. I mean, are people doing that now? Yeah, are I wear people tall doing socks. high socks again? I wear high socks. Oh, wow. okay. I, today, in fact, I put these ankle socks on. Because my pants are kind of like they're cropped pants, yeah. so you can't really be wearing like tall socks with cropped pants. That's no, weird. Um, so kind of I living wore, in two in between lands at that point. Yes. So I wore ankle socks today for the first time in probably weeks, and I was like, "Huh, look at those ankles. There they are." <laughs> you know, I've been wearing crew socks for like months. Uh, Murder giraffe says, uh, "Send me them thighs. I got you, bro." Thank yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Send me them very thighs. Kind, it was a weird angle too. I don't. It was an uncomfortable <laughs> angle. It was a strange. I angle. I had to make sure to get my like genitals right out of the picture, <laughs> but I still wanted to kind of show off the fit. So yeah, it was it was a weird angle. Maybe I should have left my bulge in and just been hyper aggressive with it. Um, how about this? Oh, man. This is pretty cool news, Rich. Okay. Uh, so you saw the Haley Van List stuff, right? Oh yes, and I have a question about that. Yeah. But let's talk about this first, and then I'll. No, ask. no, you go, 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 well, Haley Van List. So I saw that for sure. And I guess this is my question without being sort of a spoil sport. Um, like, so now you have her, right? You yep. have all these, the, like, the best players. Yeah. Winning is always fun. Yep. Winning is always fun. Straight up. But is winning less fun when you're the only one who can really win? Uh, so, you, you, you know, no, like, look, 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 time out, time out, time out. You don't raise a bad point, but I I don't know women's basketball, so I'm not the best to answer this. Me either. But I don't know if that's accurate right now. Okay. Because South Carolina is still probably going to be chosen to be better than you. Okay. Uh, like, that used to be I, the case. Again, I don't know women's basketball well enough either to know that, but I just feel like that's where we're headed. And I'm not saying we're there yet, but, like, when there's only just one team that has everybody, like, well, is that fun no, anymore? No, so in my mind, that's where we were, right? Because uh, that's I what guess, UConn was. I guess that's true. For, like, 15 shifts, years. But it, sh- but, yeah. that, but it shifts. And, like, I feel like, in, and I'm sure, like, I'm probably dabbling in a little bit of that, like, NIL. This is why NIL is not working or, or, or shouldn't work or whatever. But, like, that's kind of what's happening, you know? Like, you're just paying a bunch of people money to come to your school, and now you're the best at everything. Is it still fun? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, and that's why I started. I was like, winning's no, no, fun. No, 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 I get it, though. No, no, I get it. it, it but, but no, no, I see what you're saying. It would not be fun if I thought that LSU was just going to guaranteed walk to another national championship. I don't think that's the case. I think you have a few super teams. Yeah. I think South Carolina is yeah. going to continue to build okay. super teams. I think, I think a 
few super teams makes it more fun, right? I mean, like, uh, as long as it's not just, like, one person, like, one team piling on all the best players, then yeah. it's just, like, what are we doing? No, I agree. I mean, UConn's always going to be Because those games aren't even going to be fun to watch. Um, like... I don't know that post Caitlin Clark. I don't know. I like Iowa had a run. I, I don't. Yeah. I, I don't know Iowa well enough. But no, I, I feel comfortable in tenure at least now. To your point, there still is like women's basketball probably mirrors like the American economy more than most. Like there are your yeah. few oligarchs yeah. that have all of the talent, but and that it's has not always just existed a little bit. Yes, like I mean, you know, before NIL, like that existed in football, like that exists in baseball. Yeah, it it does, but it's just like now we're just like no, we're not li- we're not even like pretending it doesn't. Wait, so how about this? Uh, even though I know you're gonna be like, I don't really care. Um, Mississippi State beat Ole Miss again. Huh? Had to feel pretty that. good like during the one. midweek. Let's go! 2-1, one. One, baby! Cup. Well, that one's a fun one. So how's that work? It's, it's not an cup. SEC game, though. No, it doesn't like, count for it's like, it's just like a It's just like a game we play every year, the Governor's Cup, and you get to keep it for the year. So we got the Egg Bowl. We got yeah. the Governor's Ooh. Cup. Star that one felt, that good. one felt kind of fun, you know, just because that one for real we play just to be like, we're better than you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You like, know? Like, it doesn't even it doesn't count for the conference. It doesn't matter at all. Like, it's just pride. Um, and when you play for pride, it's more fun probably. Um, but, well, hey, we almost beat Tennessee last night. Look at us. Uh, Look at us. Oh, whoa, did that series start last night? I missed yeah. that. Um, we, uh, okay. We, we have played a lot of, well. we played, a, I feel like, a lot of Thursday starting series. I don't know why That means you're playing very good teams, generally, because that means that the TV, because that's like when you get on TV. Ah, well, so, we, uh, we lost, yeah. which is expected. Well, Tennessee's but only hot by right points, now, though. <laughs> which, I know, I know. Tennessee's very hot right now. We, and we came back. We, it was like, when I checked the score at one point, it was like 7-1, to one, and then we ended up losing 8-7. to seven. Like, we came back. Um, I mean, you know, like, you don't want to cheer for a loss. A couple know, no comments to get to here. Uh, William Ivey says, Gordon there is Gordon McKern's the reason we got Van Lith. No one's acknowledging that fact. We'll acknowledge it here. Gordon, proud sponsor of the show. Shout, Shout out, out Gordon. G-Team. Thank you. Gordon, father of NIL. Um, Mudbug Pie raises a good point, which is that in women's basketball, NIL is actually the players earning it themselves. Yeah. Whereas in football, it's being pre-handed out as an enticement to someone who you think could be good. So if you're someone who's like, we're paying these kids that don't deserve it, like you should be happy with women's basketball. Yeah, that's true. Because these superstars have already proven to be superstars and are being rewarded, unlike the guy who's a five-star but may end up sucking in college, but because he's a five-star in high school, you've got to pay him $500,000 to come to your school. Mm -hmm. Uh, Really quick, shout out Ryan Pitchford. Um, He's in the chat. (laughs) Our daughters have the same birthday. Um, and I guess I know him from being a listener. And anyways, Estelle and his daughter have the same birthday. Oh, okay. And, but, yeah. uh, but they also look the same. Really? Like, they look, they have very similar, like, looks and, like, uh, mannerisms. I see you what sure you're doing you've never there. hung out with Ryan mm-hmm. before? But I was at Superior last night picking up margaritas and food, and I was walking yeah. out, and all of a sudden I see this little girl turn the corner, and, like, for just a moment, oh. I was like, why is my kid here? <laughs> like, like just for like a, for just like a like a this because they're the same size you know like it's very just very you know specific. I've never had that happen that but way I was like I oh my god <laughs> there was no worse feeling than being a little kid and you think you're like tugging at your parent shirt uh-huh. and then it turns around it's a stranger you're like ooh you're like immediately <laughs> very freaked out I've never had that happen the opposite way so shout out Evan Venable says uh, Gordon McCartney's not the reason we got Van Lith you're right it's Kim Mulkey uh, shout out Coach Mulkey. The shout legend, out Kim right? Mulkey. The legend. Shout out Gordon. All lines. Shout out Payton Women. You know, like, I don't know. I'm cool with it. Um, Thomas Deer, uh, if you ball out on the football field, Gordon is knocking on your morning uh, Monday, uh, on your door Monday with the back. <laughs> wow. Yes. So that is true. Like, Jaden, it's it's one of the great parts. Now, yes, it, it, in this age, if you play well, you will be rewarded. Like, Jaden Daniels literally got on the G team after the Alabama game. Yeah. Like, hey, I mean, hey, who whatever. doesn't love that? That's a meritocracy. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's ideally how you want things to work. That's good. I love that. Uh, I do, too. I do, too. All right. Uh, how much money do you think you would have made? Bro. Who would you, who would, I feel like you're a very specific vibe. Like, who would have paid you money? Like, what would you have done? Well, the thing is, I think I would have made money because, like, in all things, um, I'm a beneficiary of nepotism, right? And so you're looking for hey, someone don't hate the who player. has don't a hate the bit player. of a name and a profile and back in the day Ooh, and also in I was Louisiana like, oh I was man good you would have made so much I know, money I know I was good at doing media does that too. make you sad uh a little bit a, a little bit yeah <laughs> little bit. yeah I'm happy for the boys yeah but 
I it's a weird thing to know that I would have made far more at 18 to 22 than I do as an adult. Yeah. That is, yeah. That's like a well, little, it's a little bit of a mind about, F if you like, think about it. I know we need to go to break, but that's like, if you think about Libby Dunn, like, you know, as a gymnast, like you graduate from college, unless you're like going to the Olympics and you're competing, but like, yeah. there's not like any, it's not like a pro sport, you know, like, so she's making all of her money now, you know, yes. like because when she gets done with this, like well, people but now, will still people. To be fair, people will still pay Libby Dunn because she's people love I would her. Say influencers, she yes, can make money. People yeah, love her, forever. but like, but just gymnasts, like people, sports like that, like this is when you're gonna make your money. Yeah, Bilbo says Bob's little feet on Sherwood would have sponsored absolutely. <laughs> uh, Gordon would have bought T Bob so many chess boards and miniatures after that Tennessee snap. T Bob would have had Ross shop in a Kasha Mart. That's actually. <laughs> A little too close to home there, Thomas. <laughs> okay, uh, Were you hanging out with me in college? I know you. I don't think you're old enough to. Uh, all right, when we get back, let's do a little Ask the Bench. OTB. OT. Go to centralplumbing.org, 925-8552. Centralplumbing.org, 925-8552. When you overstink it, don't overthink it. Okay? It's Central Plumbing, man. Old house, new house, red house, poo house, doesn't matter. Uh, they fixed it all over it 50 works, years. Works, Call me Dr. <laughs> Seuss up in here. Theodore Geisel was his real name, okay? But you know who keeps it real? Central Plumbing does. So they got flat rate pricing. Everybody's licensed, bonded, and insured. You can trust the work that is being done uh, for the reasons I just mentioned and for the warranty. Month of service work, a year on new installations. You have peace of mind during every single phase of the process. What? Thomas is older than me? Shocking. You look incredible, Thomas. You know who else looks incredible? Central Plumbing. 925-8552. 925-8552. Don't think twice. Pick up the phone. CentralPlumbing.org. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. What's the matter? What's the matter? My windows, siding, and my door. That's what's the matter. Relief windows can fix all that. I got you. Pop, pop. What's up? Oh my gosh, look. Curb appeal. That's a good looking neighborhood. Reliefwindows.com. <laughs> Hey, what's up, y'all? It's that time again. It's heating up. Your boat's getting ready to come out and spend all summer on the water. It's time to take your boat to the next level with front-to-back boat service, where if you want an incredible custom speaker install, it's going to blow people away in the water that's there for you. You want an HD sonar where you can see the fish under the water before you cast, beat all your friends, that's there for you at front-to-back boat service. So don't put it off. We got the parts in right now. Get them now before they go back on back order. Front to back boat service. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance with the latest in office technology from desktop to production segment units Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. 
Hi, I'm Brandon Landry, founder and CEO of Walker. Hi, my name is Dr. Craig Green. This is Ryan Terrio with HudcoRoofing.com. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. No matter how big your commercial roofing job, Hudco can help. My patients come to me because they trust that I can get the job done at a high level. Ryan Terrio and Richard Tilly have the same level of trust when it comes to roofing. If you have a roofing issue, call Hudco Roofing. Give us a call, 364. Moscona inviting you to join us for Friday's AFR presented by Don Juan Cigar Bar. Recap in round one of the NFL draft preview in the weekend and looking ahead to LSU, Bama, and baseball. Join us, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. OTB, OT, with Hester and T-Bob on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge and 94.7 ESPN Alexandria. Everybody chill. <laughs> I know. Everybody chill. Know. We forgot Tears for Fears. I should have told you, Grant. That's my bad. I was going to say uh, points to Grant for telling us all the information we needed going into this segment. He's like, you have this many minutes. No, you Grant's have this awesome. Thing, but then no Tears for Fears. Grant's so, been like, doing a great job. But he didn't know. But okay, he didn't know. Okay. You can't get critiqued if you haven't been coached Points can't it. be taken away if you didn't know. Normally, we play Tears for Fears the entire segment Friday on the way out. So you can find it. You can find it. What, what, what song is it that we play? What's the name? Um, um, the World, Who Runs the World. Who, I don't who, know. Uh, I don't actually know. I don't know, I don't know music. Uh, you know this. I know, but like I can't remember the, so- the name of the song. Mm-hmm. Well, here we go. I'm going to get it for yeah, you. Yeah, find it for Grant. Uh, Ask the Binge, brought by Cole Curse Light, Vizier, Tilted, Blue Moon, Lot. Isn't it Everybody Citrus Wants to Rule the World? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tears, Tears, Everybody Wants right? to Rule the World. Go ahead yeah, and yeah. just give us that. You can come up with it whenever. Just start it whenever you want. Low volume in the background here as we do a little Ask the Bench. Um, uh, while we let some questions roll in here. I will say the lighting in this spot is much better than the lighting in this yeah. spot. Yeah. Now that also, I, last week I said it wasn't, it is. I think somebody thought you were standing up earlier because they said the height difference oh. between <laughs> T-Rob and without Jake is like really pronounced. What if <laughs> to you be were, fair, what if okay. you were, no, no, sit down. What if you were actually standing up right now? You would be so tiny, like yeah. so short. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Oh, wait, oh. now I'm here. My, now I'm here. My, so. <laughs> you're okay. You're okay. You're great. You're great. You're, you're doing great, great sweetie. Uh, you really have done fantastic yeah. job today, G. Uh, yeah, there's and, really nothing you could. I tell that, like, when I was working here and I would, like, train audio producers and they would, like, fill in for me or they would just, like, whoa, oh, yeah. Turn down a little bit. Bring it down a little bit. There we go. <laughs> when I would, like, train people or someone would fill in or I would let them more. run it like a segment and they did stuff like that, they'd be like, oh, and I'm like, no, no, there's just really nothing you can do in this show. There's nothing you can do in this show oh. that isn't just part of the show. There we you know, go. it's just all part of the show. And he do. We, we, when you can crash, press any button back there and make any noise and we'd be like, eh. true. <laughs> and, and, and when I gave him a, uh, you know, when I, when I said, Hey, give me a draft take, he knocked it out of the park. Oh, there. okay. Knocked it out of the park there. Uh, ask the bench. Wait, well, you just were like, give me a draft take? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Said, On air? Yes, yes. Well, I said, look, why? No, 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 sorry. <laughs> Did he know that you were going to do yes. that? Yes, so okay. I said, I said, look, I'm about to, I was like, I basically said, I'm about to talk for a minute, but you two get your biggest draft takes ready and then oh, I'm going to okay, come Okay, okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> I feel like it's a lot of pressure for the new guy. I know, know. I wanted, hey, look, dude, you got to throw him in the ring, right? See uh-huh, how, see uh-huh. if he sings Grant, Grant Pass with flying colors. Uh, Grant I mean, Taylor's out shows. here kicking ass. I did um I did some shows on talk and Grant was the producer and I had a lot of fun with him. Oh always. hell yeah, yeah, dude. Well we know that he loves preteens. We at least learned yes. that today. No, yes. my bad. He loves yep, F one. Yep, he yep, loves yep, F one. Yep, yes. He loves F one. I misread. I forgot. To be queer. Yeah, yeah, okay. He loves F one. I misread the situation. <laughs> Ask the bench, how's Riv's holding up now that Danny isn't simping over anymore? Aww, I know it's a so- yeah, we were got supposed to. You were supposed to put together just now. <laughs> I think she's feeling fine. You were supposed to put together a goodbye thing. We for still are, but oh, we okay. have the draft part. It's like every Thursday, next Thursday next is Thursday. the play. Um, ask the bench. Uh, what would it take for me to get to you to go to an LSU track meet? I would love to go, but I'm out of town this weekend. Uh, ask the bench. Um, what ask the bench questions? Don't get, I don't know how to answer that. Um, <laughs> what ask the bench questions? Don't get asked enough. I, I've, 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 I've no idea. Um. <laughs> I feel like I saw some. Mm-hmm. You're not Did gonna want to read see? one of them. It's uh, just being condescending about Mississippi State. Oh, what it's is it? Classic. Right. It's just how classic. Really like, pri- Wait, what? There's one about uh, being that Rivers went to MSU. Uh, yeah, how are related? Yeah, second cousin on my mom's side. Ah, there we go. Yeah, own it, like Tyrion says. 
wrap yourself up in it. Whatever somebody would seek to attack you with, oh, yeah. wrap yourself up in it and wear it like a suit of armor. Mm -hmm, That's mm -hmm. what I do with my tiny hands. Mm -hmm. That's what I do with a lot of my Your foibles. Tiny yeah, okay, relax. Size 12 is not tiny, okay? <laughs> Completely normal size. And a thick 12, okay? <laughs> Triple E, boys. I got a wide foot. How about that? <laughs> yeah. How come we don't make fun of narrow feet? All you little skinny ski pole feet, boys. I have okay. Flat feet. I have like uh, snowshoes. Essentially, I could walk on the snow and be. I think completely we're pushing fine. it a little bit. Okay. No, 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 no. I'm telling you. Um, Is it. there anything you want us to know about yourself that we never ask about? Oh wow, jeez. Where? <laughs> how much time you got? <laughs> we love you. We'll be back uh, on Monday. With more OTB, I hope everybody has a wonderful weekend. Lady on. OTB, OT. There